Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup Mid-Atlantic Qualifier. We have seen some amazing action go through so far as it was Overwatch on Monday, and we were followed by uh, Rocket League was on Thursday, Super Smash Bros. Tuesday, and the start of Valorant was midweek Wednesday. We are now going to have the conclusion of Valorant with each and every one of those game winners qualifying for our grand final event, the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. That'll be at the Gateway Center Arena, May 7th and 8th, in just a few short weeks. And it will be the largest live Collegiate Esports event slash festival ever. It is going to be amazing. Tickets are on sale right now. CECC.GG is where you can find those tickets. So without further ado, you guys know me, Pauly Hype. Hype, Pauly. Yeah, call me Paulie Hype. Uh, we'll, we'll go like that as we start here, this Mid-Atlantic qualifier. As we take a look here on the day, once again, this is going to be the finals of Valorant. We have Maryland College Park taking on Rutgers in match number one. In match number two, we have West Virginia University taking on Concord with those winners facing off. And the winner of that grand final match will see us down at that Gateway Center Arena May 7th and 8th. So, you guys have heard enough out of me. Let's take a quick moment of hype. You guys know the deal. No moment of silence around here. Moment of hype. Let's go. Collegiate Esports is here. Esports University. And let's throw it over to our casters, Los and Juggle God, for the call. Over to you guys. Thank you so much for that introduction, Polly Hype. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and family beyond the binary, good evening and welcome to the semifinals for the CECC right here at Esports U. Once again, my name Warren Juggle God Hammond, joined on the mic by handsome host Los. How are you tonight, my friend? What is poppin' Juggle God? It's good to be here. You can see I was doing a little bit of uh, dancing there because of the hype yeah. from Polly Hype. It's just too much, man. He's building up, and it should be built up because this is a big deal. It's the CECC. Mm -hmm. Players have a chance right now to get a ticket down to Atlanta. So there's a lot on the line right now. It may be a qualifier, but it's more than that. You have such a great opportunity to be part of the biggest, the biggest, as it has been mentioned. I don't want to understate it. I got to keep <laughs> saying it, that this is the biggest collegiate esports event ever, 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 ever. And it's all going to have a, a little bit of another track here as we continue moving forward to the 7th and 8th. But today, We've got Maryland College Park going up against Rutgers for our first semifinals. I am beyond excited for this one. As am I, and we already have the ban and map picks in, handsome host Los. So, uh, before we get to that, though, why don't we take a quick look at the brackets so that we can see exactly how we got here today. So, um, it started out, let's see here, I'm pulling up uh, my copy of it as well, uh, with uh, Maryland College Park um, winning... Uh, their first second game uh so winners of those two gotta be meaning in our grand finals and like Polly said getting that ticket to atlanta yeah and that's what's at stake here that's what's up for grabs and we are seeing that maryland college park went undefeated in their initial group of group a and they're going up against rutgers who did manage to make it out of their group going two and one but it still will put them as a uh, a little bit of a disadvantage because maryland unstoppable up to this point so it should be interesting but all those previously were best of ones as we have seen that before the the previous qualifiers but this is going to be our first taste of a best of three so there is an opportunity to read into your opponent you have the chance to fully understand what they're going to try and bring to the table what their setups may look like how they like to play if they're on the back foot or how they like to press the advantage and it, it's very hard to read your opponent when you're only given one map previously but even in those instances Maryland's come out on top, so this is going to be a, a real test if they can keep that strategy, keep that real fire in their their bellies, I guess, up to snuff here in the semis. Yeah, and we're going to see uh we're going to see things starting out here today on Haven. Uh Maryland going to be taking defense on this map first. So already starting out with a very exciting map, a very dynamic map. Of course, there's gonna be three spike sites. So uh perhaps even a little bit attacker favored on this map, even if it's just slightly uh low. So uh really some exciting things to see coming up with this with this map. I think we're gonna learn a lot about both these teams uh when we see how they play here. 
Yeah, of course. Haven is, uh, it's a difficult map to keep all your angles covered because you have three spike spikes. You're going to have to have some area with less defense. If you want to have every single site, you know, secured, you may want to leave B a bit unguarded. Maybe drop a trap there. Just see if someone wants to push in, play for the retake if that's a scenario. Uh, but there's one place that you cannot let go unguarded. That's got to be the garage you can't let that be <laughs> unabated if you let someone take control of that it opens up so many possibilities so it will be crucial to hold those angles uh, i think we're going to learn more as soon as we hop into the agent selection but after we jump into haven we got a few more maps on the docket it will be ascent and icebox to follow it up icebox if it is necessary if we don't end up in a 2-0 scenario so it will be it will be great to see what these two squads can bring to the table and also keep in mind folks this is going to be a single elimination playoffs that is true so the moment you take an l in this bracket you are out of the tournament there is no lower bracket for you to make that uh cinderella run in it's a uh, one Against the wall here right they're starting at that situation so this is their do or die time yeah there's nothing uh nothing left to lose here you have to just throw everything you got in the server no time to waste no strategies to keep guarded for a later series you gotta drop it all in the server right here and right now and sure enough we'll be getting into the server for haven in just a few moments We're waiting on everything to uh shore up as we are loading into the lobby, but I'm I'm still excited. It's it's a standard uh, map pool that we're seeing. You know, Haven, Ascent, Icebox. These are definitely some comfort picks that we'll see from a lot of collegiate teams. So I mean, the teams seem to be ready. We will be going into the games soon, and actually, we're gonna be jumping into Agent Select in a few moments. Uh, I always like the agent select because this is going to give us an idea. You know, we can we can kind of theory craft as they're picking agents, and we can start to comment on uh, you know maybe how some of these picks are going to impact their style. And in particular, you know, I'm going to be looking at, you know, how how each of these teams are going to stack up defensively, right? Because defense is going to be stretched thin on a map like Haven. So, you know, what is it that you're going to do to hold down all three sites? So, you know, already taking a look at Rutgers, we've got a Killjoy in there. Um, great for holding down a site, uh, potentially a Ivan already picking the chamber, likely going to be uh, posting up at C, maybe B to you know, hold down that long sideline. Um, with an Omen as well, I think uh, the Omen, uh, you know, we don't, we haven't seen too terribly much of Omen recently, but today we're going to be seeing it on both sides, potentially. Yeah, I, I'm not even going to acknowledge Marilyn right now, unless you lock in. I'm not going to look at that. So we can talk about we can talk about Rutgers because what they do have right now is quite standard. You have the double Sentinel. I mean, mm. Ivan more really, you know, that's that's a duelist if we're being honest. Chambers a duelist. <laughs> we can get that. And the double Sentinel, double initiator, zero duelist composition, which is always an interesting one. There will be a pick of next jumping onto the jet, so you could expect them to just Play in a similar style that Endless may. You know, Endless might be looking down C long. Next will have that same position, but looking down A long. So a double operator will totally be on the table for Maryland as we jump into this map. And yeah, we will not have any neon classically. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna bait us a little bit, but we did see <laughs> neon a little bit in the uh, the previous qualifier for the West, and that was the that was just not that was not a good play. It was not it was not a good agent to pick and I I certainly would like to see Neon find a place for herself as a, a viable agent within the competitive scene but at this point she just needs to take some more time to develop maybe players <laughs> need to understand how to play her better but now we got some pretty solid compositions um I'm excited what are you thinking about either team's lineups here well, to me, I, I I I look at Rutgers and I I see a team that's playing much more defensively, right? They um, I think want to make their mark when they're on the defender side, right? With that killjoy, um, with that chamber, I, I think I think they've got a very good defensive um, potentially lockdown on this game. Whereas you look at Maryland, they're going to be going, uh, they're, they're doubling down on the attack, right? They're saying, okay, Haven is an attack map. We're going to double down on that. We're going to see if we could just blitz through the attack side. So this is what I'm seeing. I, I'm seeing a classic attack 
versus defense squad. Yeah, that's what it's all going to come down to. And this is some serious attack from the beginning. Wow. But that doesn't that doesn't start off too well for them. Well, it's going to be a quick uh, 4v4 as a trade comes out almost immediately. Very fast push onto site A um, from Rutgers. They uh, want to take this as quick as they can. Quanti already has the plant down. Very little uh, utility also expended to get onto site. They are taking this very, very quickly going to be an interesting retake now we've got almost uh looking to see if they can find a little information beautiful shot coming out on the classic they're able to take down uh near alma as well 2v2 now on site los okay well now it's all up to <laughs> Quanzi to get it done but they just can't do it that was a, a fantastic retake out from next specifically who came out with yeah. i believe a 3k on the sheriff yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful play coming out from them for sure. Defense going to take the uh, first side, so Maryland off to a quick start. They're going to be happy about that. They're going to be able to buy up a little bit. And, of course, uh, Rutgers is going to have to be content with just some pistols again. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it's going to take. I, I think I want to talk about this in the beginning of that round. That was such a wild offensive that we saw. Mul both right? teams, they just jumped right down mid to make something happen. Bailrosh died, and there was a trade involved with Ivan. But in the end, you know, they were able to force a rotation out of that. Now they have a bit more idea Center toward, oh my god, see. Or at least they thought they did, but Endless gets a great shot. A second one, too. That, to me, seemed a little bit foolish from Wreckers. I mean, they were playing a default, but they kept peeking C long, and you know that they're going to have um, some kind of a sniper rifle looking down there. So that's a quick two-player advantage in favor of University of Maryland College Park. But they do strike back a Endless. Gonna find another. They are up to a 3K already. Now it's just up to Ivan to see if they can get a plant, maybe make a little bit of money, hurt the Econ. Um, and you know what? I'm not even, I'm not going to count out a potential, uh, win here for Rutgers. It's on the table, but it's going to be an uphill battle. All depends on the next move against next. If they can get that timing, that crazy oh. timing, that would have been what they needed. Not going to happen though. Next chilling on top of the boxes by a holding it down, not having any rotation of the sort and they get the job done again. But really we got to say that was on the back of endless who just had two freebies on the, uh, the Marshall down on C long having that re peak after an initial pick in the beginning of the round. It's not, it, it's not what you want to have. And it severely cut down their numbers in the beginning, but now they got some rifles on hand and I'm excited to see it. Kwanzi, unfortunately though, only rocking with those light shields. I'm going to be curious to see how this bonus round goes for University of Maryland. They're going to try and push it up C one more time. See if, uh, you know, maybe they can out duel that Marshall that's been hanging out there. Almost going to look for a little bit of information as they start to push up C. They've got the Omen Smoke close by so that they can get a little bit of progress on the site. Quick push out on the C. Most of the members of Maryland also backing off of it. They're going to give up the site and just play for post plant. Yeah, and, and rightfully so, you know, they don't want to just throw their bodies on the line. It's a clear disadvantage in terms of firepower, but maybe Endless can start things off. They have the ability for the rendezvous, and next is on the flank. If they catch this shot out, no, not yet. But they got to continue and start applying pressure here against Rutgers because at this point, the spike's taken. That it is. We're going to see the Paranoia thrown out. One way dissolves before their eyes. Nice flash comes out. That's going to be two in favor once again of Maryland. But Rutgers able to strike back. It's the 3v3 now. And crucially, they have the plant down. That's going to be some util from KJ expended on point, preventing the defuse. And Rutgers University will take their first round. Wow, and two going down with the, the spike. I mean, it did cost them heavily. That is four rifles lost, Juggle. They're going to have to yeah. put all the money that they had, and they won't be able to have full buys again. In fact, I think they may consider, okay, good, that won't be the case. I almost thought for a moment they were considering buying SMGs, and if you have a win, you can't give up the advantage like that. You can't go for a save after winning. Right. You need to press that momentum, and maybe this will be another hard stop that we see down seat long because endless this time they're rocking with the operator. Yeah, and uh, I think in recognition of that, we see Rutgers 
uh, massing up for an A push, at least potentially. Most of the players over there on that side. Zick's gonna throw out the Aldrone, gets a peek of several players, so they know that there's at least a few of them lining up on A. Zick's gonna push very aggressively down A long. Uh, they're gonna be potentially good for one, but you have to think they're gonna get traded out. No, they're just gonna uh, die, as a matter of fact. So, Rutgers up one right now, and they've got A long clear. They're gonna be able to push very, very close and likely get a plant off of this, but two defenders are still back there for University of Maryland College Park. It was a very bold push by Zix, and it was punished, and there's no ground or nothing to lose for Rutgers, but everything to gain because they're going to rotate off. It was a bit of a adjustment as no one is on B at the moment, but now they're still endless <laughs> with the Operator looking down C, and that presence has been felt. They have to send out the smoke, and maybe they can start things off, and a Guiding Light is a good way to do it. That it is. We're going to see the Omen Smoke committed as well. Paranoia briefly um, struck's endless point of view. Nice shot going to come in. But we're going to see the Hunter's Fury leashed as well. That's going to take Endless out. And with that, there goes the Operator too. That's going to be uh, crucial for somebody at the end of this round if they can pick it up. 3v3 now on point. It's going to be Nar Malma uh, taken down. And Rutgers will even up the scoreline. Yeah, that's a great round by Rutgers. Uh, a good way to respond after taking such heavy losses despite getting a win on round three. And now they can continue that. They have the guns that were picked up from the previous round. Ivan finding that spoils of war. They've got the operator in hand this time, and it's all pistols all day for Maryland. This is going to be what we can expect. Another uh, round loss, but... That was a lot of resources expended by both squads. You did have Nara Alma try and utilize that no command for the retake, but it was just such a great post-plant setup. And if Rutgers can get the plants, they might end up just continuing to win the round because those setups are too strong. Yeah, and, you know, the uh, the interesting thing is, too, Rutgers has been able to get a lot of plants as well. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I if I'm not mistaken, I, I think they've actually planted every single round. So, Say for maybe one uh, so far. Going to be a lot of gunfire outside of Garage. That's going to be next uh, meeting their demise. Rutgers now opting for a rotation. Looks like it's going to be uh, over to a site where there's just one defender, just Sova at the moment. And that's what I'm liking about Rutgers so far is that they're very willing to just play out the time, let it elapse let the round continue to clock down and maybe make maryland sweat a little bit but this is going to be a red rotation you have two players still on sites nair alma and zix who are waiting for this attack but again they've only got pistols and the spike will go down knife is uh taken out of the equation as well by beast to hype that's gonna be a swarm grenade detonated by killjoy as well 5v3 right now rutgers looking very good on this post-plant situation, Quanzi gonna rotate underneath to hell, uh, considering throwing out that paranoia. There it goes. It's gonna obscure several of the members. Nice one way as well to help them out. Just one more defender. It's endless with a hope and a dream and a headhunter to boot. 19 HP, not much left that they can do. And since it's only pistols, they're gonna try and push out, but taken down by almost. Yeah, that's the esports you flawless you have to say but you know great <laughs> great play it's what we expected you know they were only working on pistols on the side of um so now that they have a bit more in the tank they have next this time over on the operator this is going to be a bit more of a threat here on a and we haven't seen so much pressure from the a side last time it was zix who moved up on a long got punished wholeheartedly this is going to be an interesting duel. Is Endless bring out the Tour de Force in this op battle? That's going to be two big sniper rifles in play right now for University of Maryland. Shot going to come out from Endless, but they're forced to rendezvous back to safety. Aldrone sent out now to try and clear C long. We're going to see that Omen smoke dissipate as well. They're going to spot out KO, not get the dart on them, unfortunately. Already we've got Beast of Hype uh, securing a lot of mid as well around B and Garage. And it's also important that they haven't felt the pressure of this up on a short. And there Ooh. it is. Next gets the shot. 
So they were so concerned about C long being an issue. They try A short, they get sniped. Only option left is to hit B. We're going to see a 4v3 coming up here. University of Maryland College Park a little bit in the lead right now. Paranoia going to blind Quanzi. They're going to rotate around. And in fact, it's going to be a quick um, plant onto Seaside as well. Zix going to send out that... Um, Recon Bull gonna find Ivan, takes a shot, but taken out by Zix. They're gonna be traded out, though. So we've got a 2v2 on this reef take, but next has the Blade Storm out. Can they find the value that they need? They're gonna be able to peek out Quanzi around that corner, barely catching them at the last second. Up drafting on top of that uh, container, that's gonna lead them to success, and Maryland will strike back and tie things up. Yeah, good way to make it an equalizer. It was quite a bit of an investment. That's two alts in Operator as well, but they have two to walk into the next round. Wow. So, hey, maybe it isn't that bad. That's a return on investment juggle, and that <laughs> is a huge play for them. So they're going to have both ends covered consistently, and maybe at this point they will have to rely on Quanzi as well as Beast 2 Hype. Just get those flashes, get the smokes, cut off the vision, but nobody at this point has expected a harsh resistance from B. And this is where we'll see next. They might try and peek down mid, and that is going to be a major problem. However, Naralma only has a uh, Spectre along with Veil Rush, so a little weaker in that department. Yeah, and, uh, you know what? I, I, I was thinking B would be a great site to push as well, but look, we've got that operate set up on B site. Uh, potentially, they were thinking the exact same thing. So the rotation going to come out to A, or wreckers they're gonna clear sight um with that trailblazer omen smoke gonna come out now and look at how close this is being played by ko they miss him in the smoke they're eventually gonna come back out of it but not before nar alma is good for one kill reducing rutgers uh push by one wow he hit him real sneaky deaky like right through the dark <laughs> cover backed off Sent in the fragment and just got away scot free. Here comes a flash. Maybe they're good oh. for more. They only get one, though. That is going to keep them at an advantage, though. Next, with the operator, going to increase that advantage to two. It's just Quanzi left to try and make something happen here. They're going to appear to go for kills as they've left the spike down near sewers. It's going to be one. Can they find a second? No, it's going to be endless with the head on her. Wow, another round, I wouldn't say easily won, but another round secured <laughs> by Maryland. And they still hold on to those operators, applying the pressure. I mean, we got to talk about Next, who was holding it down from the defender spawn, getting it from that angle, and anyone who wanted to walk around that a site box, they wanted to have the peak because they needed that security that no one would push them when they went for the spike plant. However, there was no security found, only death brought courtesy of next and now they still have the ops they still have the ops but no real response can be you brought to, to unless Let's maybe play. a tour de force can be the answer we're gonna have to see uh that's uh, certainly one way they could try to eke out um an advantage or at least equalize what on paper looks like a fantastic defense coming out from maryland here comes the seekers from um Rutgers side of the equation. Nar Alma gonna be good for one. Endless finds a second. Despite those seekers going out, things looking very, very good right now for Maryland College Park. Nar Alma eventually taken down, but not before they take out two. It's just almost left, and they've gotta try and take out three with just five HP. And it's almost no chance for them to win this round. I mean, you've got that player up in heaven the second they move away from the safety of these boxes. It's done so, yeah. Bill. Population almost. And that's exactly what we saw. The double swing coming from CT. Secured it and finished what everyone already knew, that this was such a difficult way to get it done. And what their response was in that moment was to drop most of their ultimates. You can see that that's three ultimates gone. It was the from the shadows. Tour de Force, as well as the Seekers, all dropped yeah. in play to try and counteract that. But most of it was denied by the no command from Nair Alma, just sitting on the other side, hitting them with the suppression. Yeah, so, you know, a, a pretty expensive push there coming out from Rutgers and nothing to really show from it. Yes, they got out a couple ultimates from the other side, but they spent more. Um, they will have two going into this uh, push. Most notably, well, uh, not anymore. Just having one. Bailrosh going to be good for two. That leaves just two remaining for Rutgers. But they do have Killjoy still with the lockdown. So if they can get the site, they can at least stall out the post plant 
um, retake from Maryland. Now it's a much slower play. And that's what we have seen previously from Rutgers. But, I mean, it's a slow play because they just don't know what to do. They're trying to figure out what the new strategy can be. Balrosh breaks the barrier and gets the wall bang headshot, leaving Ivan all alone in the 1v5, inching ever forward toward another flawless round here for the University of Maryland, unless Ivan can maybe potentially turn this into a kill. No, the first shot doesn't make a connection. That's brutal as well, because now they know exactly where he is. Uh, this five squad can start to collapse on We're going to see the knife come out. That's going to suppress him. Looking for a few shots, and oh, Endless had a few opportunities there, but the shots don't land, and that's going to be a flawless round for Maryland. It's, it's what we saw in the cards again, and the maintaining of these two operators is just such a difficult thing to overcome. Because you have no response, really, from the side of Rutgers. They want to try and maybe block them off with smokes. Maybe get a flash in. But anytime they try to push onto an offensive, you know, you've got University of Maryland changing up their positioning. You don't know where the ops are. And there's two of them. And how can you keep track? How can you defeat what you can't oh, even oh, see? Oh, oh. Next, with a beautiful shot and a dash away to make it a 5v4. Rutgers really on the back foot right now. They're down by three. They desperately need this plant on B to work. We're going to see the lockdown come out. Here comes Hunter's Fury as well to clear just a little bit more space. Uh, Spike will be planted, but um, it's going to be a quick push back onto site. Bail Rush going to be good for one, but not before Ivan takes one out as well. Frutta now looking to see if they can find something in Garage, and they will. They're going to take out one of the ops. Now it's just endless left. University of Maryland has two, but the spike will be defused, and Maryland goes up by four. That's an unfortunate one, and I liked what we saw from Maryland is the fact that they ensured they were completely secure during that last round, during that retake. But, oh, next. Oh, hit him with a great opening snipe, and there's not much you can do from that. It's like a momentum destroyer in the beginning of the round. But, like I said, they took great care, Juggle, to ensure that no one was going to be able to shoot them back. They had control of that spike and just looked around, waited maybe 10 extra seconds once they had control of it to ensure no one was going to come from an off angle because there was that pressure that they felt from mid window. But the second that shot was taken, they had another angle, two players looking at it. the smoke was on the mid doorway. So they had it complete cover, complete control of the spike when they went for that defusal. And in the end, despite as much as you want to try and spray from the mid window, you just <laughs> couldn't get it done. Yeah, no, you, you just couldn't. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's, I think, one of the one of the strengths of um, having having Omen here as well, you know, uh, giving that uh, giving that um, cloud or shroud, um, allowing allowing for the defuse to come in. So kudos to them for, you know, saving some of that resource, uh, saving for some of that util for uh, the retake right there. Tactical or tech ball is going to be done now. So we're going to be headed back into the game to see if Rutgers can turn this around. They have a pretty good buy this time, Los. Yeah, finally. This is what they need. <laughs> this is the opportunity for them to win it out and be at the moment completely unsecured. Just a trademark that's destroyed easily. Last time they got the plant down, but they lost so many players in the moment. Perfect coverage, perfect denial wow. of the side angles. And now they're in for the post plant. That's going to be next, making a very aggressive move onto the top here to see if they can uh, get this site under their control. They've got the operator looking for a head. Haven't been able to find one. They've got the blade storm out as well. Going to be a quick trade coming in. So now we got a 4v4, but the timer's ticking down. Next tries to make a move for it, but unable to. We've got the Hunter's Fury now loosed to try and make sure that Spike doesn't get defused. We're going to go for a wall bang as well. Almost looking for something. It's going to have to be a quick defuse here coming out from Maryland, but they don't have any more smokes now to conceal them. And it will be an attacker's round. Rutgers narrows the gap to three. Yeah, and a great way to get it done. Still keeping three alive. And we saw almost bring out that Hunter's Fury. Now, interestingly enough, they had that on the, the previous round where they hit B. However, almost decided not to opt for that option because there were multiple players in that 2v1. So there was an opportunity for them just to hit the half mark and then let another teammate finish off that defusal. So that is a, a smarter play.
to wait till you have protection because Ivan was there to keep them safe on the mid window. But now we have two more ops again, despite the loss of the previous round. Yeah. They got enough money. Endless posted up on A. And, you know, Rutgers has to be aware of this possibility as well. So they're going to be taking this, I think, very, very carefully. We're going to see a uh, slow creep up a long sewers now being approached as well by the other half of the team. Killjoy on the lurk now for the attackers. Aldron going to spot out Jet, who's going to have to dash back to the back of A site now to the cover of Endless and that Tour de Force. Rotation going to come out, though, uh, very quickly over to Seaside, but Omen's going to already be there. Um, going to be uh, curious to see how well they can lock down the site or if they're just going to go for a trade on entry. Okay, so they have the information. Someone is on site, but maybe they won't be expecting it. Okay, ultimate committed. Omen just needs to escape. Balrosh will get away, but they have to concede the site. They do allow a spike plant there for Rutgers, and this is just a disadvantage for them for the retake. Yeah, it is, and Rutgers is up by a player as well now, so uh, this is going to be an extra difficult uh, retake coming out from Maryland. Endless has the Tour de Force looking for an opportunity Did you use it. Now they've gotten a little bit of control over sight. They moved around to the oh! backside. That's going to be a pick. Rutgers needed to control that side a little bit more, but they were all centered up on the point. Now it's just a 1v1. Endless going to go in for a quick uh, fake on the defuse. Um... See if they can uh, bait out almost, almost going to bide their time. They know they have to wait. They know that there's not much time left. They can just get a couple of shots in. That's going to be a round win at the half for Rutgers. That was such a critical 1v1 in the end, almost saving the day. But we got to talk about Endless with the 3K in that yeah. first round. That was nuts. Getting the double, the collat over onto Frutta as well. And it was such a difficult moment. Unfortunately, uh, I think what could have saved them a bit more time was Endless didn't know exactly where the spike was planted. They were going for the default position only to realize, oh, they got to turn back. <laughs> yeah, did shave off, you know, a few seconds, but in the end, like those few seconds are incredibly important. Yeah, no, they uh, baited me as well. I thought Endless was headed straight for that spike on default, but it was actually behind him. So, you know, that was, uh, I, I think, an excellent play there from uh, the side of Rutgers to, you know, there's so little confusion in there, right? Now, this is going to be very, very fascinating, Los, to see. Um, we're going to see, um, now both of these squads, I think at their, you know, at their ideal because Maryland College Park, they've got the aggressive, um, composition. They are on the attack and now we've got Rutgers with this very, very defensive composition on the defense. So I'm going to be very curious to see how this, uh, these next several rounds go. I mean, this is a classic play that we've seen from, I mean, Rutgers, is the fact that they love to play it slow. It's time Maryland doing something similar, checking out every angle that they can, and rightfully so. They want to make that correct decision, and maybe this decision is going to lead them over to Seasight. However, you've got a much harsher defense in terms of that Killjoy utility, denying it at rush about to walk right onto that Nano Swarm. And if they're looking away, looking at the wrong angle, this might be an issue. Oh, Nano Destroyed, time for the entry. Wow, that's going to be a quick dash onto site, but Beast 2 Hype is there with a frenzy to make things difficult. Now just two players remaining for Maryland College Park. They have the spike, though. They're going to be looking for a plant, but the site still isn't quite safe. Uh, several members of Rutgers can move in here. It's going to be a quick trade coming in. Now it's a 2v1, and the defenders will take the round. Yeah, good retake out from Garage. That's what they needed, and, you know, they were a bit too late to shoot the dart. From almost, you know, we did see Zix take a shot at it at the end, but the information was already given and allowed for the double swing out from Garage to make it an easy done cleanup. And I'm not certain if there was even a uh, a plant previously. No, they didn't get no. The money there was either. no plant. Yeah, yeah, no plant that time around. So uh, a beautiful defense, uh, really coming out from Rutgers right there. Excellent positioning, excellent, you know, recognition of where the spike's gonna go. Uh, the default not quite working out for uh, Maryland, and Ivan on a tear finds wow. three. Almost gonna pick up a fourth. It's just Bail Rush left, and they don't last long. No, certainly not. A nice, cute little 4K there for Ivan, and that's also the equalizer 
this time around for Rutgers and University of Maryland. They're all tied up. And maybe Ivan wants a, a bit more. They do have the Spectre. Toss over a Frenzy to a friend. Beast too hype. Doesn't want to make that major investment after losing their life. So this is a good, a good play for them. They are in a perfect position. There's three players without full armor, without full shields going into this third round of the second half. So they're going to be vulnerable to these SMGs. Yeah, this uh, bonus for Rutgers is looking really good. You know, um, this is uh, just about best case scenario after uh, two round wins, right? Make sure that the opposing team doesn't have full shields. So uh, they're going to get the rifles, but they're going to be at a pretty big disadvantage uh, compared to where they normally would be if they'd had a little bit better round. Um, going to be a lot of util expended over towards C. University of Maryland uh, weighing their options at the moment. They pushed pretty far up into Garage, um, just about to the point of commitment. There's going to be a trade coming out, but Garage is back under defense's control. Got a little bit of a push coming up C long right now, but that's going to be a nano swarm uh, preventing them from pushing on. And in fact, we're going to see another rotation come out uh, potentially over to. No, no, take that back. It looks like uh, they are amassing at C for a push. Yeah, they want to make that commitment, interestingly enough, even though this combination of, of players right now is their worst nightmare. No pun yeah. intended with Omen, but it's time for Quanzi maybe to make things happen. Oh, the knife's going to miss. Quanzi, oh. they're going to be able to get three off that corner. Everybody swung one at a time, and Quanzi has to be happy about that because they are one away now from an ace as well. They just have to take out the Sova. They're going to start pushing through the smoke. Sova darts not going to yield any information. Quanzi checking these corners. Not going to get the 5K, but the round will be won by Rutgers in the end regardless. A bit of greed in the end because they wanted it so bad. I mean, <laughs> yeah. rightfully so. I understand why they wanted that one, Juggle. Who wouldn't want to press the advantage? Quanzi in this corner. They even knew that they were there. They knew yeah. Quanzi's location, but in the end, they just outgunned everyone there for Maryland. Yeah, they did. Uh, Quanzi uh, did a fantastic job of taking out three of those players and shutting down that push really single-handedly. So beautiful play coming out from them. That's going to give Rutgers their first lead in this series. Yeah, free guns, free money, up in hands. Vibin, <laughs> this is, is not what you want. We'll be spotted out, so that should be a quick notice from Zix that it's time to move away. This is not where we push. Uh, no, it is not. They're going to run back, uh, pick up the spike, and start to amass uh, for a B push, actually, it seems. Um, Jet trying to push up through a uh, garage, seeing if they can get any information on people rotating around. And they go back in right as the rotation comes in. Next, looking to see if they can push through. They see just a tip of Vista Hype's uh, shoulder. They're going to throw out the Guiding Light, but not find any value with it. Quasi, though, able to pick up a uh, pick on the Endless. So Rutgers University looking pretty good once again. Yeah, now they're choked up here by Grass, and, and they have no mobility at the moment. They're stuck. They want to break into Garage, but it's got almost triple coverage at this point, and they yeah. can't make a move. And we have Zix over here who's still waiting maybe for an opportunity on long, and they're going to get it because Ivan doesn't land the shot. This is a, a longer push. There's no escape for them now with the suppression. Yeah, Ivan going to be forced to back out very, very quickly. They're going to swap over to the shorty, looking to see if they can find some value in the smoke. They get one, but they uh, are going to be able to actually dash out as well. But still, um, Rutgers looking at a good place. They are going to pick up the round win and go up by two now. I, I really like that play by Ivan. <laughs> you know, you back off, you hit with the suppression, your utility is out the window, nothing you can do, but you have a shorty in hand, the cloud burst, uh, mm -hmm. actual assist from next, allows them to run on through. Let's let's see this again. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> Good night. I mean, next does get the revenge, but in the end, that shorty kill was everything they needed. Yeah, it really was. It was beautifully done by uh, by them. You know, recognition of the situation. They uh, need to just uh, try and make something happen. A uh, beautiful, beautiful play. We're going to see a push coming out onto C site. Now trade comes in. Ivan going to be suppressed. Uh, Nar Alma getting two right there. Wants to be able to strike back, though. It's going to be a 3v3 now on C site. 
can they get the plant in is the question now do they feel secure enough yes in fact it will come down so the timer is on we're gonna hear the hunter's fury unleashed as well um trying to make sure nobody pushes on the side buying a little bit more time for these attackers but look at this flank quadzi gonna be good for one onto zix we're gonna see uh the paranoia come out that's gonna lead to two and rutgers will get the defuse yeah great retake out of rutgers and you know we were talking about were they feeling secure enough to play and that's something we've seen from maryland is that they're very cautious to make strong execute strong moves you know whether it's a retake whether it's a plant they want to have full security before they get into that play and unfortunately you know they got hit with a crazy flank out of quanti and also we got a note specifically they were hit with that recon arrow from uh from sova so despite the fact that they were able to teleport away with the rendezvous they had that owl drone dart in them to still show where the location was setting it up perfectly for Kwanzaa and now they're three out from taking out map one yeah that they are and look at the buy they're coming out with as well they're gonna get a quite a bit there there's gonna be a marshal showing up um for the attack but that's gonna be a far cry from the operator in the hands of Rutgers already Rutgers good for two as well so 5v3 coming in uh, they briefly flirt with the idea of pushing up Bay, but look at this. B and C are completely open, and they've already got a Chamber taking a look down C as well. But check it out. The strike backs come in. That's going to be a beautiful play coming out from next with the Blade Storm. Just down to one player. It's just a kill joy left, and they are scrambling trying to figure out where this team is going to go. Oh, yeah, you can tell that Maryland is pissed with this round. They are not allowing themselves to be bullied any longer. Quanzi <laughs> wanted to get into the back line, thinking they could get cheeky again with the flank. It does not pan out. And that's a plant over onto C site. We do have Freda. They realize that this is where the site is. No coverage to speak of. All they have to do is maybe use that turret to play off of. Maybe they could bait out somebody. They have to know. And these players are going to take the long angle. And there's not oh. a damn thing they can do about it. Nair Alma with the operator shot from long. Gets it done and it's a thrifty round. That it is. And that brings Maryland back to within two. And that is big for them. I, I won't say that was a must win round. But it was pretty close, Los. Um, because if, if they had gone down again, things were going to be looking pretty dire. But as it stands, both teams are going to have a very healthy buy. That's correct. I mean, well, I mean, the healthy buy coming out of Maryland is more weapons stolen from <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Endless, Endless now stealing Ivan's off. They're allowed to bring that on through without almost in a similar situation. They're just trying to cheese it out. They want to win this. They want to get this map done. They've brought out the Odin. Yeah, they have. And uh, when the Odin comes out, uh, they mean business. Gonna be an air alma throwing out a flash, not gonna find anybody. Next, looking for a potential push down A, as are several members of this uh Maryland squad. Zix uh considering throwing out a recon bolt, but opting uh not for it. Rutgers finds a pick courtesy or of the tour de force. We're gonna see the recon bolt coming out. That's gonna yield a little bit of information, setting off. The turret front are going to be good for one. Make it two. Beast of Hive connects for another. And that is a flawless round from Rutgers. And that has to hurt if you're Maryland because there was uh, there were quite a few guns on the line there. That was a great response coming out of Rutgers. Throwing out that last round to a bit of overconfidence that we saw from them. They were getting in so deep, trying to take the fights over to University of Maryland. But the second that they play it back and don't play into the hands of the attackers, it works perfectly. Beast and Freda have it no problem at all holding down this site with a full buy coming out of Maryland. And that's such a, a crucial thing about having Killjoy as your Sentinel rather than uh, Endless on the Chamber exclusively because there's much more stopping power with the Nano Swarms, the turret, as well as the Alarm Bot, more so than what Chamber can bring to the table. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like the post-plant utility, the post-plant power that a Killjoy brings is just tremendous. And I really feel like we're seeing a lot of that come to fruition here for the Rutgers University side, you know? Um, I, I think we talked about how this was, you know, just a very, very attack heavy squad going up against a very defense heavy squad. And right now the defense seems to be winning the day. Beast to Hype tried to spray through a uh, garage there a little bit, but it's going to be Ivan who picks up the kill onto Zix. 
Now Maryland down to just three. And if they lose this, it's going to be match point here, Los. Yeah, oh my god. Next dancing with the devil. And unfortunately, in the <laughs> end, they will be dragged down to hell by almost leaving just endless as well as Oh, wow. well, I mean, maybe leaving just endless as it's only Balrosh maybe to save the day, but they can't save nothing. It's a flawless again here for Rutgers. Yeah, that was a tremendous round for them. They have a lot of momentum behind them right now and a lot of econ, a lot of guns. Even if they don't take this round, they're going to be able to just about full by next round. A beast of hype maybe won't be able to, but... Somebody in their squad will definitely be able to buy for them. And look at this. It's going to be a pretty scuffed loadout coming in for Maryland. This is not looking good for them, Los. No, absolutely not. And also, if you're looking at the scoreboard, that's seven rounds in a row that we're seeing. Yeah. Rutgers. Okay. Well, there's some information. Lots of players moving down through C Long. Ivan, thankfully, was able to save themselves with the uh, the rendezvous. And actually, another shorty! A oh! second shorty! Make it two! That's gonna be a quick 3v3 now. But the spike will be planning. Look at this, they're going for that uh in you know uh, that interesting positioning again, not opting for uh default. We're gonna see. Oh my gosh, Ben Rush tries to use um, their fade to get out of trouble, but they're unable to. Rutgers down to just two players. Uh, make that one. This is a UMC coming back, but the defuse is coming in. They haven't been able to bang through the smoke. That's going to be a Rutgers win. Wow. With two alive, that cannot feel good because they still had people who were there. They could have denied that possibility of the defusal. Unfortunately, it's another situation. We've seen something like this, I, I want to say, maybe three times throughout this first map on yeah. Heaven. Both sides were sufferers of this same scenario being blocked off by the dark cover, trying to shoot wildly in it. But, you know, as we've seen, history has repeated itself. It has forced another round loss and another defusal again. But this one had so much more weight behind it because it's allowing Rutgers to take the first map yeah and with that that's gonna put them on match point as well this is a, a best of three so not much room for error right here uh we will be headed to ascent next and uh uh los this is this is one of my favorite maps in the game so i'm excited to see what's gonna happen as we move on to that map but before we do that, we are going to take a short break, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back with more of the semifinals Valorant action.
We are back and ready to head into Ascent, handsome host Los. 1-0 to the scoreline. Rutgers up right now. University of Maryland, College Park. They desperately want to come back in this because there is a lot on the line. Not the least of which is a ticket to that grand finals in Atlanta. That's right. I mean, they certainly lost control of that previous map pack on Haven. It was seven rounds in a row. I mean, they did give away a thrifty round due to overaggression. I'm not going to count that. I'm going to consider it was 10 rounds in a row for them to finish it off. So that's that, that's just that's just my that's just my opinion. Maybe to take it or leave it. <laughs> but I mean, considering that was the map of Rutgers University, we can expect we can understand why they were able to bring it back so effectively. But now we're heading over to Ascent and this is the pick of University of Maryland. So I can expect them to have a much stronger play, a much stronger time, but let's also not forget the fact that University of Maryland, they were very destructive on the defensive side back on Haven. Oh, yeah, they absolutely were. They um, uh, did a fantastic job uh, holding them at bay. So, you know, as we move into this uh, next map and with Rutgers being on the defense first, I, uh, yeah, excited to see if they're going to opt for, you know, a very similar defensive heavy composition like we saw on Haven or if they're going to mix things up a little bit, uh, given that they've got one fewer site to keep track of, a uh, one fewer site to defend. Yeah, well, now we can see what everyone is bringing to the table, and I can expect, oh, a, a little bit of a adjustment. We're seeing a roll swap out of Quanzi and Beast 2 Hype. Beast 2 Hype, formerly on the sky. Quanzi was on that omen, and now they're shaking things up, and that's what I like. Uh, a team that has that versatility, a team that can bring in uh, adjustments when it comes to the different maps. Endless, hovering on the Neon. Don't even talk to me. Juggling <laughs> about them kind of going with a, a similar composition to last map. Uh, we're going to see KOs uh, at least being uh, hovered over on both sides. Uh, Freda back on the KJ as well. I believe it was Freda on the KJ last round. Was it not? Um, I believe, yeah. Freda. I believe so. I believe so. It, regardless, they had they had a KJ on there. Um, gonna be Omen again. So, uh, you know, th this is interesting. I I have expected to see uh maybe a little bit more Brimstone being played today, but they're uh, they're opting for the more yeah the more mobile the the more flanky um option the more aggressive option really in in the in their smokers both sides it appears um. Very, very uh, interesting choices. It's going to be uh, not quite a mirror composition on either, or, you know, um, right here. It's, it's There's going to be some notable differences. Um, you know, I think most notably the Chamber and Jet. Um, you know, similar in that both are, you know, likely going to be holding down these long sidelines with an operator. But in, um, in execution, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, one gives a little bit more defensive presence, where the other is going to be... Uh, uh, more balance in terms of, you know, whether they can attack versus defend. Yeah, of course, you know, it's it's all about how you can play to the strengths of your agents. But, you know, playing as Sentinels or with Sentinels on the offense is always a tricky scenario because you don't really have that efficacy that you're hoping for until you get that spike planted. So, you know, it's always about just covering your flanks, covering those angles. And that's why Chamber has been such an interesting shakeup to the meta because you can have a Sentinel that is a entry fragger. They can bring that to the table. But going back to the composition that we're seeing here today coming out of Maryland is that we're having another swap. Balrosh previously running the so or the Omen swapped over with Zix, who was Sova back on Haven. So we're having two players, two initiator swaps for controllers as we head over into an ascent, which is interesting. I like it. But now a lot of the posturing for this first attack by Maryland is taking us potentially towards mid and B. Yeah, it's going to be a very fast push towards mid. They're going to take over market almost immediately, briefly slowed by one of um, one of Chamber's gadgets. going to be a smoke onto site with a dash from next. They're likely going to be able to scoot around here, but they're met by Quanzi, who's going to be good for one. Now, Maryland down by two, desperately trying to decide whether or not they want to continue pushing on B. There's four defenders there, so... This looks like maybe not the best idea, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a rotation coming out. And this smoke, if it dissipates, that's going to be endless. They're trapped, so they have to make a move before this goes away. I mean, there is no longer a cross-cover position, but maybe if they stick around, they might be playing for an aggression play out of Rutgers, who 
felt like they got the advantage. Maybe they want to walk up B main. Maybe they want to go in for a flank, but they're actually continuing to push on through. Yeah, that is uh, another forward play out from wow. B. They might potentially go for uh, another take. Yeah, that looks like they're actually going to go for B. So the rotation comes through on A, but look at how quick it's going to come through mid. They're going to be spotted out, endless taken out, and that's going to be a quick 3K to end the round in favor of Rutgers. Oh my god, the regret, the immediate regret from Endless, you can see. <laughs> they saw, they went for the mini, the tiny swing, the tiny peek over into the defender spawn. Saw three players, tried to get out, but it was too late. The tags were there, there was no escape, and that's a rough start. I mean, they were playing the long game, which we've seen both of these squads bring to the table, but, you know... It just it just didn't work out in their favor this time around. So maybe they can opt for new, some new strategies. They've got sheriffs on deck, but they're going to have to worry about Ivan, who's back on the marshal. That they are. That uh, marshal came into great effect uh, during this um, during during our last map. So in in really just the sniper rifles in general had a very large impact on uh, the play. Of course, to be expected on a place like Ivan. Oh. Massive para picks coming in. From Ivan, more than half the squad for UMCPG. That's going to be them uh, once again on the back foot. And, you know, not to be surprised in their save round, but still, it's got to hurt. Yeah, if there is a marshal in the hands of Ivan, you know wow. you're in trouble. Okay, a little bit of overconfidence. There's a 3K. Ivan shuts things down with the marshal. A nice finisher, but in the end, next did... Managed to scrap away two from Rutgers, so they will have a bit of a scattered Frankenstein buy, as we could see. Maybe they will make the investment as we go into round number three, but more than likely, just some upgraded pistols that can try and find some support for the rest of the team. And yeah, this is Ivan back again, denying it. The jump shots are doing a bit of duck hunt in the moment, making those <laughs> hits with the easy martial flicks. Yeah, the uh, beautiful stuff coming out of Ivan. They really have been a standout player for this squad all day today. Going to see a default coming in now from Maryland, uh, trying to decide where they want to push. Um, looks like a lot of pressure being put up mid right now. Firefight breaking out there. Quanzi throws out a grenade and a flash just to make sure they're okay. Fires through the smokes. Finds one with the Spectre. That is a tremendous amount of value right there. Uh, unexpected as well. There will be a trade back in. So 4v4 situation now. Uh, things not as dire as they were a moment ago for Maryland. No, I mean, they have some safety. They can back off the dark cover down mid denying pizza is good enough. And a second one to boot as they can clear out arches. So they've got control now. They have taken back everything that Maryland was fighting for and only lost one player for just some even trades here and there. Now they might go for another peak down mid with dark cover still on some cooldowns. This could be an issue for Beast 2 hype. It all depends on the first peak. Kwanzi gets some information and relays that to the team. Now they got to back off. But they only got 30 seconds left for the rest of this round to make another execute. And this time yeah. again, it seems to be B. Maryland may have twiddled their thumbs just a little bit too long because now they're going to be forced uh, to push onto B no matter what. So these defenders can rotate over there completely. Oh. Ivan finds one through the smoke again. We're going to see a grenade thrown out by Killjoy. Spike will be planted with just seconds to spare, Los. Yeah, I mean, they get the spike down, but it's cost them quite a bit to get to this point and a phantom is in the hands of beast to hype they have to lead the charge for this one and they have to ensure nobody is in the main okay there's zix the first one the first encounter and they're gone forgotten two left to defend this site they're doing a good job of it so far barrage gonna be good for two it's just one left now for the side of rutgers can endless find the kill ivan's gonna be able to pick one up can they get bail rush in the back they've only got 33 health but the timer's going down very very quickly ivan goes for the fake defuse not gonna get it i don't think they've got enough time one hp left they get the kill but the round will slip between their fingers I mean, they are removing every single gun from the side of University of Maryland, and maybe that will be enough. 
they could still buy some rifles phantoms vandals already in place but i mean gotta talk about this two kills ah. through the smoke today just in this round ah. just spraying oh through. my gosh that's that's so annoying to have to deal with that and still come out on top i mean Belrosh put that round on their back i haven't in the end did manage to get the 3k but even so they saved the day with their play on solo yeah, that they do. We're going to see a nice fragment come out that's going to deal a bit of damage as uh, the members of Maryland try to push through. They're going to pay for it with a pick onto next as well. They went just a little too far, flew too close to the sun. Got to be four agents suppressed. That's the entire squad. So now we see the wholesale rotation coming in from B. Camper briefly, briefly uh, decides, though, in to remain over there to lurk on B set at least for a moment. They are going to travel over to mid but check it out the spike making its way slowly through attacker side spawn with hoban i mean they're taking their time for sure zix is expecting a flank but really no one is even on b itself and they have to think for themselves what is the play what is the plan and they've always played it so slowly up to this point i mean even on haven they have been a, a slow team when it comes to the executes and that has come to bite them in the end now with three, are you seeing this? There's three players chilling out in tree and catwalk. <laughs> they are, they are expecting someone to go there. They are not letting anyone through. And here's the dark cover blocking off tree. It's time. The signal is here. They go for the swing. Wow. Rada. Tremendous play coming out there. They get the 4K eventually gunned down by Zix. But look, Zix suppressed it with nine HP. Uh, there's no chance that they're going to come away with this round. Rutgers ends it and takes the 3 1 lead. How many smoke kills are we seeing here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> we got we to gotta check this out again. So Nero goes in for the peak, but they commit too much in terms of the uh, that uh, zero point. They want to make the swing but they commit too much of their body to it front of there. A stalwart defense of 4K without any fail. And they're going to continue to steamroll. Ivan's back on the operator. Balrosh wants to try their hand at the marshal. Maybe they can outduel him. We're going to go for a quick wall bang here, seeing if they can get a cheeky kill, but none to be found. Uh, about 50 uh, bullets expended at that, but Ivan gets one with just one. That's going to be Zix out of the fight uh, via that operator, and it's going to be a quick uh, rotation coming out from Maryland right now. They're going to be picking up the spike. Uh, Killjoy is in spawn, and it looks like they still maybe want to try and push B despite um, that operator lingering on that site. Well, I mean, the last time that they pushed A, it certainly did not go well. And currently, there's only one player. It's almost, but they get another shot on that recon. They have some information. Okay, there goes next. And they'll send the bullets right back to the entrance of B. And they can back off, walk away with that freebie kill. And that sets University of Maryland even further back than they already were within this round. We're going to see a flash come out from Nar Alma. They're down to 11 health, so it's a very easy kill for UT almost. Balrush now looking towards mid, trying to find the head of KJ, uh, or KO. But it's going to be Beast to Hype who takes Balrush out for the win. Another Commissioner's Cup flawless that we're seeing there. <laughs> no, no problems really for Rutgers on the defense. And this is looking a bit scary if you're a, a fan of University of Maryland because this is their pick. Let's not forget. Right. And they're doing so poorly in terms of their executes. But also keep in mind, to be fair, they are having very scattered buys. It's unable for them to walk in with these full rounds. And they aren't opting to go for those full saves because even though it was more of an eco round for them, they still have light armor. They don't have that full utility, that full shield to get things done, but they're going to get it popping here when they're almost no command. That they are. They're going to push onto fi uh, site very, very quickly. It's going to be a flurry of kills coming in, but they're going to go the way of uh, Rutgers. Going to be one player advantage here. Next with the Bladestorm, unable to get the kills that they necessarily needed. And with a... Uh, the old coming out as well from KJ. That's going to be a quick spike retake and another round in favor of Rutgers. 
And that wasn't even a necessary lockdown. It was just to put some added pressure. But yeah. when there's only two players left, the paranoia came through. It was the opener to remove the player who was holding on to Speedway. And in the end, when Next wasn't able to convert those blades into an actual uh, uh, frag for them to refresh those knives, that just left them stranded completely with only a classic in hand. And rightfully so, we're seeing a, a timeout being brought into play because this is certainly not how you want your maps to go, your rounds to go, your executes to be executed. If this is your map and you're intending to make it past the semifinals because after this, they're out. If they continue to yep. go down this slippery slope, they will not advance into the finals. You're exactly right. And I like this timeout, right? It's going to give Maryland a chance to kind of reset their mentals, you know, see if they can identify what's going on here, come up with a, a you know, a better plan to try and come back in the series. And um, if we can bring up the scoreboard for a moment, there's one thing I would really like to point out with the attackers. Look at next. Next is supposed to be your entry fragger, right? Next is sitting at two kills right now. They just used the blade storm. Didn't find anything with that either. So next is getting shut down hard by this Rutgers squad. So I don't know if uh, Maryland needs to give Next more support or if Next just needs to find their A and find their pop-off potential. But that, I think, is one of the crucial things that's preventing them from getting round wins right now. Yeah, and let's also talk about this buy. That's a bit deep in terms of Next buying that, uh, that yeah. bundle with the full armor. Are they going to be able to bring in that full utility? It really depends on their performance here, and it's scattered. Sure, if you have that Vandal to start things off, it's good for yourself, but with the rest of the squad only on Sheriffs, you don't have that support, which is exactly what we were talking about needing. And the recon bolt oh. is a little too late. However, the box coverage is good enough. They're almost still getting a hit, though, with the shock dart. Yeah, a lot of damage uh, taken by KO, so... Um, with that initiator looking a little bit rough, I think it's going to be up to Sova for Maryland to, you know, make that initial push then because you, you, you don't want KO going down early in the fight if you can avoid it. Uh, but Narama is still posturing over on B. They're going to lurk there until um, the rotation is almost complete over to A site. We haven't seen too many rotations when we have university of maryland and they don't have success in that first peak you know they want to back off and re-peak it again re-execute but it doesn't work out and maybe ivan here with that operator will be in hand but it's a flash out from from tree oh, it's actually oh. working against them it was their own teammate rude but kwanzi and almost wow. on the site Big kills coming in from those two players. It's just Killjoy left. They've got five HP. That's not going to be enough. And the defenders take another round. And at this point, uh, Rutgers, they, they've, they you know, if they win another one, they, they're coming out ahead on this half. Yeah, and it's seeming to be the case. You know, <laughs> in, in the moment, Kwanzi dropped that flash drive. I just want to touch yeah. on that one again. He dropped out the flash drive, blinded Ivan, but in exchange for that oopsie, maneuver he got a 4k to save that day so i think you know you could uh you could laugh that one off but certainly not if you're university of maryland you still lost out on plenty of cash now you've got some money you got some utility potentially use that lockdown use that hunter's fury because it's already been placed this is your opportunity to take a site yeah and you know you could even use the uh you could even just use the lockdown on entry as well you know uh, one of the things we uh, we mentioned is that we haven't seen very many plants come out yet from Maryland. So, you know, possibly using that uh, lockdown to get yourselves on site, maybe not, uh, might not be a bad idea. Of course, you want to save it if you can, but at this point, I think uh, Maryland might need all the help they can get to get on site. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you have those assets at hand and they're almost just continuing to give it a shot. Well, if yep. the turret doesn't break on the first 10, maybe on the second 10, it will. Kwanzi sends out the flash drive looking for some info, but doesn't get it, but Balrosh, on the other hand, they get their man. That's a good start for Maryland right there. They needed uh, something to uh, give them a little bit of hope here because being down 6-1 to one is a rough place to be in the semifinals. That's got to be uh, bad on the mental. So getting that early pick, definitely going to help pick them up quite a bit. We're going to see the push coming out onto A side as well. We've got KO starting to move over as well. We're expecting a push here in the next couple seconds. But once again, Entry Fragger next is gone. 
Ivan taking him out with the sniper rifle once again. Here comes in a knife to suppress. It's going to be Chamber uh, unable to use any of their abilities, but the spike will be planted. And that's a big boon for Maryland once again. I would anticipate this lockdown coming out relatively soon. Maybe that'll be the case. I mean, there's that from the shadows coming out of Zix, and they reposition back to A main. That's critical. And especially with this fragment, it forces a bit of pressure onto Ivan. They move away. They bring out the headhunter, but Zix is good for three. That was a much needed round win for Maryland. They're going to be able to take a little bit of momentum with them into this next round, including a healthy uh, amount of guns. So... They're not going to be uh, hurting too much on the Econ. And in fact, look at this. Ivan not going to buy because they're going to be using that Tour de Force. And that's a, that's a good usage, but you also have to be careful. Because their Alma will have the potential to hit you with that suppression. But based mm -hmm. on this positioning, doesn't seem to be the case. They're going to hit him with the default, looking for picks where they can. And yeah, that's exactly what we thought. Tour de Force put into play. Make them think twice about any angle, any longer angle that they'll take. Default coming in once again from Maryland. They just want to scope things out, see if they can figure out which side is looking a little less uh, defensible by Rutgers. Narama picking up the old orb as well, getting ever closer to that null command. Spike still hasn't been picked up. Uh, nobody from Maryland making a move just yet, Los. No, and this is an incredibly slow play. Another one that we've seen, and all this time has gone by. Maybe a little bit of information gained, and finally there is some control taken here by Maryland. They'll get a bit of mid, walking up toward Cat, and they might have confirmed that no one is hanging out in that area, but the second they walk through this dark cover, they're going to find resistance. Ivan is also here on the other side of A. Maybe they can get the shotgun. Oh. In play, that won't be the case. It's going to be one down for Maryland. Quanzi finds another. Next, we'll be able to strike back. And as a matter of fact, it's a 2v2 now on point. Big gunfight going to go the way, at least the moment, of Maryland. It's down to just Killjoy. And with that, the attackers narrow the gap to three. Maryland is back in this, Los. Yeah, that's, that's what they needed. A bit of time to reconsider what their options are. And those slow plays have worked out well. Because Ivan got a bit comfortable looking down A main with the Tour de Force. And that was exactly their issue. They were good for that teleport away back into hell. But they were going for the quick scopes. They were going for style. In the end, style won't win it out. You got to stick to the basics. And that's what allows Maryland to get back and play. Big courtesy of Next with the 3k to open up that round for him. And that's exactly what they needed as well. They needed Next to come alive here and start popping off. And maybe we've seen the beginning of that. We're going to see the uh, Null Command used uh, to get on the site very, very quickly. But Barrage is going to be good for one as well. This is looking great for Maryland. They may be narrowing this gap to two momentarily. Plant is going to come out almost now trying to wall bang through the floor. See if they can find somebody. East to Height pushing through tree now with a couple of other members brother gonna be good for one that's next out of the mix once again and they were just popping off so that's gotta feel good for rutgers but now it's just down to one player almost gonna see if they can find anything but with that killjoy ult online not gonna be much they can do they've certainly come alive wow what a great resurgence from maryland a few rounds in a row three even they can continue this, and they can turn this into an even equalized half. Yeah. We were just talking about it, how they only needed one more to just take the lead. And Rutgers was in the driver's seat for this map, but now things are starting to turn the way of Maryland. And if they keep this up, they certainly can tie this up. If we're talking resources now, they will rely on Kwanzi to potentially shut down any offensive using that no command. And, you know, looking at the Econ as well, if Maryland wins this round, Rutgers is not going to have a full buy next round. So this is Rutgers in their must-win situation if they want to come out of this half with the lead. Um, and even if they win this round, Maryland's going to be able to buy up significantly next round. So I could very easily see a 7-5 to five or a 6-6 six to six half. Um, not entirely sure if it's in the mix for Rutgers to make it 8-4, to four, but it's a possibility, though I think that's an outside shot at this point. A lot of action happening over on A, but the first pick is going to come in courtesy of 
Maryland. Uh, actually, uh, there was one I missed. So already Maryland in the driver's seat. They've got two picks. Make that uh just one in their favor is frutta combine uh is able to get a nice oh. pick onto bail rush but they're not going to be content to be down by one for very long frutta finds another it's going to be a 3v2 now and the spike still pushing on to a yeah there's a suppression there's the information they needed they will be able to get this plant down frutta hoping to get his shot on through by the door switch won't be the case a little bit of damage on the Ultra, but it doesn't matter too much the pinch is here. We can have Ivan. Oh, there is the alarm bot. Ooh. That's what they needed. They could have gotten that that flank around, but they have to swing on to Endless. Oh, the pre-fire actually gave it away. Yeah, that was a beautiful play by Ivan. Narama, though, going to be good for one. Can Ivan find another? No, it's going to be Narama taking us to within one point in this match, Los. This, this is what you love to see because we expected great things coming out from Maryland because they came through into the semifinals with a 3-0 and record. They were undefeated. And yeah. to go into this series, taking the first loss, and in a seven-round loss streak, 10, 10 for me. 10, 10 rounds for me. The board right. will say seven. <laughs> but Yeah, but you have to think back to the last map, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. so this is, this is good for them to bring it back. And at this point, Rutgers, they don't even know what to do. They're trying everything they can. They're getting aggressive. Ivan gets a good shot onto Bail Rush, and now almost is pushing the offensive. Wow. And that's a great flank. This is a good comeback coming out from Rutgers University. They are looking primed to end this half 7-5. to five. They desperately needed to come away with a win here. And um, it's against the odds as well because they did not have a good buy going into this. Um, or at least not a great buy. The plant will come through, though, for Maryland. But it's a 5v3. We're going to see the lockdown come out as well for Rutgers. So that's going to make things that much more difficult for um, the attackers to push back in. Ooh, all look good for one, but Kwanzi there to close it out. Now it's all up to Zix, or it was all up to Zix, but almost denies it. They will not have the equalizer. It will be the 7-5 half in just a, a moment of just great power. Rutgers finally is able to find themselves one more time, bring it back, deny that five round win streak and close it off seven to five. Back to a pistol round we go, Los, and excited to see how Rutgers is going to fare on the um, attack. You know, I, I felt like they were much stronger on the defense last map. So going into the, uh, into the second half with not quite the same, you know, lead that uh, we would have seen had they, they been on the attack first in the last map, but it, it might be a little worrisome for Rutgers, right? Because I think uh, Maryland's defense was pretty solid on Haven. Yeah, and that was the case. It, a big factor that allowed them to find success was their unpredictability. And I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Just shifting around whoever controls the operator, keeping them guessing on what angles they need to smoke off, what angles they need to flash, is, is what led them to success. But now they're running on, rushing in to be near all but there to deny wow. placements with two kills. It's going to be a 3v4 right now. Rutgers on the back foot. Quancy going to throw in a flash to see if they can get a little information. Things are turning back around, though, for Rutgers. They've got the advantage now in the kill feed. But look at this. Ivan, only 4 HP and no heals in sight. No. None at all. And this is definitely a, a, an interesting retake next. Fully relying on some wall bangs. Almost able to take out potentially two. There's the alarm bot. Placement revealed. Maybe swings can come in, but none to be found. Ooh, the suppression is there, but next in six. Good for a kill. It's going to be just Quanzi now to see if they can hold this down for Rutgers, but they won't be able to. That's the defuse coming in, and we are back to a one-point difference in the scoreline. Yeah, that really comes down to clutch plays from Next and Zix. Working together, a duo, an army of two. We'll throw back to that game if you remember it, but in the beginning, it comes down to Nar Alma. Everyone did their part. They got the 2K. They set things up for a potential retake, and it was a great one indeed. Although they did get the plant, at least Maryland was able to secure the round. You're going to see 
A nice buy coming in now for University of Maryland. Rutgers relegated to Pistols once again. So it'll be a tough save round for them. They're going to go for a default as well. Trying to get a little information on each side. Uh, KJ turret up in a very, very standard spot on B. Omen smoked out A. So going to be a hard push on each side. And already Rutgers finding that out uh, the hard way. Ivan down to 17 health as well. That uh, B-side push looking a little less uh, appealing. I mean, that's happened for both teams when they want to make an attack on B-side. It is just such a difficult place to break on into. Almost hanging out on the side of the dark cover, waiting for someone to try and peek them. I don't think that's going to be the case next. Just moments away from ripping apart these two players. They get a wow. shot, but the, the tailwind provides safety, but they can't win oh, it out. Oh, oh. Unlucky next uh, had the opportunity, but just didn't land the shots that they needed to. Rutgers University down to just one member again. And while maybe to be expected them to take this, uh, to not take this round, this is going to hurt quite a bit because they've only gotten one kill so far on the Maryland side. So Maryland's going to be looking really good for their bonus round next. Kwanzi alone with a dream, a sheriff, and 20 seconds. Here's the big play. Oh. And there it goes. <laughs> yep. Nice shot coming out from Nair Alma to end that out and to take us to a tie game uh, here, Handsome Lowe's host. Handsome host, Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I mean, yeah, this was next. You, you just want to go to the next round after you're feeling that yeah. unfortunate. Even, oh, you can even <laughs> potentially check. We got the, the insider scoop of all chat. Endless said wrecked kid. So that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of insider info there. <laughs> but hey, uh, 7-7. Seven Let's see what can happen now that there's guns on the side of Rutgers. Yeah, Maryland hoping to come away with a win in this bonus round here, but it's going to be a little bit tougher considering those rifles that Rutgers has. We're going to see the push coming out onto B-Site. They're going to break through the door, try and push uh, through Market. Aldrone sent out to do a little bit of recon now, but the site uh, very well under control at this point of um, Maryland still. A couple of defenders on it. That's going to be next taking out Ivan on lane. Uh, about half their health, though, left. They're waiting for the swing to come in. They find one. Not going to be good for the second, though. It's a 3v2 with Rutgers. Going to be able to get the plant out. Oh, great use of that recon arrow. Because it gave them the opportunity to wall bang onto Belraj Zix. The last one alive. They've been able to clutch things out in terms of the retake before. Can they get it done again to earn their spot? With the eighth round, all depends on almost. Will they make this peak? He's just hoping for it. Oh, it's the jiggle Ooh. peak. It's the denial. It's just a little bit of toying with their food. And there's the double oh, wow. swing. Good for one. Six will fall ultimately. And that was a beautiful double swing coming out from Rutgers. I mean, uh, the timing there and just, you know, the fact that Zix just happened to peak out at that moment. Couldn't have hoped for better. Uh, let's take a, another look here at how that round uh, played out. Next yeah, got a couple of kills. I think that's a bit of a redemption arc there for Next being able to right. find two after that uh, that Wild West whiff that we saw from them <laughs> back on on Catwalk, and they're they're certainly happy about that one. Unfortunately for them, they will lose out ultimately on the round. But Vendel's back in hand, a bit more opportunity for them with rifles to work with, and yeah, a lot of players. Stalking up toward A main. Not many people there to defend it. We've seen plenty of large stacks of defense for A coming out from Rutgers themselves. But Maryland, not the case today. No, they're going to just opt for the KJ and Omen. But we do have KO rotating around now. We're going to get a smoke out on Heaven. Another's going to come through on main. Al drone sent out to see if they can get some information on site. Not finding anybody. And with that... KO gonna pop their um, no command as well. They go down very, very quickly. A flurry of kills coming in in favor of Maryland. Just five seconds left to go for one of the members of Rutgers to try and revive KO. They break down the door, though, to prevent the revive, and that's gonna be KO out of the fight. It's just Ivan left. 
And we've got a tie game once again, Los. Massive denial coming out from Maryland. Massive destruction coming out from Endless, specifically along with Nair Alma. They denied everyone completely. I was talking about, well, they didn't have a great amount of players on the site. You don't need a great amount of players when you're pulling off shots like that. And only took two, and it dropped five. So perfect placement, and you know, they didn't even need the utility to get it done. All aim, zero brain is what was necessary to win that and equalize it again. And both these teams still fighting tooth and nail to get play. ahead. Let's I think play. this is the time for Maryland because you got bare bones here for Rutgers. Yeah, exactly. This is uh this is great for them. Uh this is their round to to win right here. So, you know, uh, one one of the uh, some quote I heard from someone, right, is that uh, when you're looking at teams in Valorant, right, something that separates the good ones from the great ones is winning the rounds you're supposed to win. And right here, this is a round that should go the way of Maryland. So let's see if they can capitalize on this opportunity as they push through mid. They're getting quite deep through mid. Yeah. And you already have next. They're waiting for players to just run on through. And they're consistently bobbing and weaving, looking toward CT, looking toward B main. And this is a perfectly read, perfectly telegraphed, unfortunately, for Rutgers. They know exactly where they are. They got the double crossfire put into play. Or maybe next doesn't really know. Oh, they go for the updraft. They don't die. <laughs> but now they know everything they need for this execute. There goes. Oh, it's just wow. a slaughter on mid. Yeah, it is. Rutgers University down to just a bare bones composition. It is Chamber and Killjoy left. Chamber, uh, rather, uh, Frota will be good for one, but that's gonna be it. And Maryland goes back in the lead, 9-8. to eight. Yeah, I mean, we expected that from Maryland, because you were sending in Rutgers. They had sticks and rocks, essentially, going up against, uh, the Rifles. <laughs> Unfortunately for Rutgers, Ivan made a commitment of the Tour de Force. With all those players up on mid, there was no need for anyone on the side of Maryland to peek out from a, a position. They didn't need to get aggressive because they had three or an unknown amount of players in the palm of their hand. All they had to do was just pinch them. Yeah, and uh, that's what they did. And uh, kudos to them. Came out with a great round win. It'll be Bail Rush now sending in a recon bolt. Got to be destroyed very, very quickly. So all they learned is that they were there, but they knew that already. We're going to see Omen briefly uh, flirt with uh, TPing on the point, but they're dissuaded from doing just that. Frutta, good for one. That's an opportunity for Wreckers to start to come back in this, but the plant will come through onto the B site. So now they're in a retake position. Next, going to be good for one as well. That's going to even things up for Maryland. And now there's the commitment, the no command coming out from Nar Alma. If they can deny this KO from walking down Speedway, that'll be important. But the flash drive is wow. there. Maybe just a spray and pray out of Ivan and Beast to hype. They could potentially save the day. It's only next in a 1v2, but they aren't expecting Quanzi in the corner. And again, 9 to 9. The equalizer is here, Juggle. Like the Spanish Inquisition, nobody expects Quanzi in the corner. That's going to be a nice win for them there. Uh, nine to nine now the score. The, neither of these teams really given either uh, each other any purchase in the score line. I mean, we had such a dominant performance early on from Rutgers, but they, you know, once, you know, taking, taking a look at the scoreboard again, right? Take a look at where Next is. Next has frags now. They've got 14. Last time we talked about them, they only had two. And look at the score line now. Maryland is exceeding. So, they found what they needed in Next. Next has found their footing. Whatever Rutgers was doing to neutralize them before isn't working, so they've got to do something else to try and mitigate their effectiveness. I guess getting some information on them in the beginning is a good start. They realize they're in mid. There's two players. They still have Zix there to provide cover if need be, and even a rotation of mid, a swap of positioning. So, interestingly enough, now Nara Alma in the back of mid. A little bit of a uh, razzle-dazzle <laughs> to change up these positions. Yeah, we're going to see a uh, push coming in over towards A now. Several players want to try and take it through tree as well. And uh, Marilyn really likes uh, likes that uh, push, I think, through tree. Going to see the spike, though, making its way slowly around towards main. Uh, three defenders on A, but look at this. KO is opting to rotate back towards B. They think that the attackers 
maybe in fact rotating, but they're all just still stacking on A, waiting patiently. 30 seconds left to go now, so the push has to come through on this side. And as soon as they commit to it, we're going to see all these defenders from B rotate over. Here it comes. Okay, yeah, dark cover placed to stop the turret from having the efficacy. Whoa, Quasi with a crazy god flick. And if they remove Endless, that's it. They can walk on through. No denial in terms of utility with nine seconds to spare. The spike is put into play. We're going to see the Hunter's Fury taken out as well. Nar Alma going to be good for one, but almost in front of combined for a pair. It's just going to be a K uh, Sova left to try and defend the spike here for the attackers. We're going to have Balrosh rotating through mid now. And look at this. Uh, so many members surrounding this uh, player on site. Balrosh now trying to find some kind of way to get into sight. They're rotating all the way through spawn. And at this point, I think they're just playing for exit picks. Yeah, there's no real way that they could turn this around unless they just have an amazing play. But the time is already up. They yeah. have to try and remove weapons out of the hands. And maybe they're good for one. And honestly, Will they be good for two? Enough. Oh, they're even good for three? potentially three. No, oh. it's Brutta. Brutta who denies that. Keeps the Odin in hand. But what I liked a lot from Frutta is the fact that Belrosh activated the Hunter's Fury, shot twice, and then Frutta dropped the lockdown for even yeah. further denial because that was the one ticket to deny the possibility of bringing that lockdown because you can't destroy it with that ultimate. But waiting until two shots were already made, it made it impossible. And I think that was the trigger for Balrosh to realize, well, I can't win this. I can't clutch this. The lockdown is denying space, and I'm running out of time. And now they are running out of time and resources, especially going into this next round. We're going to see the blade storm popped by next. Going oh. for a kill through the window. They find almost. That's going to be a big boon for uh, University of Maryland. Most of the members now start starting to line up towards a B and mid push, but next going to be able to find Frutta as well. Rutgers now with just a bare bones composition, three members left, but they've got an initiator controller and that hybrid uh, Sentinel duelist on chamber. So they could still make something of this, but they have no ultimates commit to this. Uh, whereas uh, next still has that blade storm. We're going to see the rotation coming out to a now. Okay, this is a pretty wild execute. They're walking their way through Garden, getting into Heaven. Is, is This is a, a complete swap. This is yeah. a complete swap that we're seeing right now. They're dropping <laughs> down. Next is there. Good for a third. And maybe Ivan can secure this spike plant just to give them some extra money and put the pressure on the opponents. But they're wow. able to find one before they fall. Beast too hype. May have to deal with one by dice. And they realize it. There's the play moving around the position. But no. Oh. Nor Alma, they clutch it out. 10 to 10, gonna be the score line here, handsome host Losa. We have got a great game on our hands right now, and you've got to admire Maryland just uh, scrambling back into this match and making it such a close one. Uh, next, just a beautiful Blade Storm right there. I'm really happy to see them back in this match and having such a big impact for Maryland. Yeah, 100%. They are certainly saving the day three to get that round uh, finished off. And it came off the back of a, a updraft with the Blade Storm to say goodbye to almost. And that is just a huge play to remove them out. Now they have another chance, another opportunity, potentially denying the 11th round for Maryland. I mean, that's how the script goes. It's one and one. If some team can win two in a row, <laughs> we might have a bit of an issue here, Juggle. Yeah. Yeah, we might. Uh, that could actually be a runaway situation, you know, uh, considering that the econ of both of these teams is is tenuous at best, right? Uh, because they've traded back and forth so much, neither team has really been able to build up that much in savings. Minute on the clock now, and uh, Maryland, they love this slow push. It's worked for them in the past, and they're hoping it does again. Spike still hanging out near A, um, where... While we've got a couple of attackers, uh, several actually making their way through mid. Spike? You know, not on hand. They don't exactly need it. But time certainly is running out. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice looking guardian, my life. Anyways, flashing. Ooh, that is. There's a sound cue. I have to know something's up. That position by the door switch is a critical one. 
It all begins yeah. with their look onto Zix, though. They're able to get a pick onto him. Quanzi finds them with uh, the pistol. That's going to be Ivan good for another via the Guardian. We're going to hey. see um, many of the members of Maryland go down. Rutgers in the lead now by two. This is uh, going to be their round to lose. And Valrush going to be good for one. That's going to make things significantly easier for them. We're going to see the Nano Swarm committed as well up onto that high ground. Briefly uh, dissuading Endless and Co. from pushing out and trying to find a good angle here there's another one that's going to take them down uh to 88 hp spike starting uh to beep a little bit faster here time is beginning to run out for uh the defuse to come in endless holding it down Rutgers trying to make some progress on this here can they come away with something it's gonna be too late even if they decide yeah. to get these frags you know we have almost playing for that hunter's fury and there it is yeah, yeah. They'll be able to get it done. No clutch yep. here. They save the day, and they end it out. And everyone dies on the side of Maryland. No guns to be recovered by anybody. And you know what? I think the slow play ended up uh, shooting themselves in the foot that time around. Uh, you know, had they uh, potentially made a, a push quicker, I think uh, things could have gone a little bit better for them. But, you know, it, it worked so well for them in the past, you can't fault them for trying it this way again. I mean, also, Ivan... They had a good position there, but they pressed forward too much. I think in one of those scenarios where it's it's getting a little bit high stakes, you don't right. want to throw your body on the line. You just hold some angles because you have plenty of players still alive, especially when you have almost as your you no know, final condition to win it out. The nerves have to be high here on both sides as the push comes in onto B site. Uh, not going to opt for a default this time is Rutgers University, but the rotation going to come through in very, very quickly, it appears. They're going to take it all the way through mid, uh, closing off um, Pizza and Market. Oh, Zix, you sneaky devil. Uh -oh. It doesn't work out. You're sniffed out. That they are. Now Rutgers with an advantage here. They're going to see if they can run away with it. Now this could be them moving up to match point as Ivan gets the plant. Two-player advantage now for Rutgers University, but Killjoy has the uh, has the lockdown, but it's not going to do any good when they're back in spawn. Just Sova remaining now. This could be Rutgers beginning to run away with it. This could be the beginning of the end for Maryland as we are now at match point. Yeah, this is it. It's match and series point here. If they win it right now, that'll be the end of it. Maryland, they've let it slip. And that's two instances where they've allowed two rounds to go the way of Rutgers. They've got to stop them right here and right now. I mean... <laughs> oh, Zix, unlucky. I've been caught there before by that same thing. Your gun's just peeking out a tiny little bit, right? And that's that's just enough for uh, Killjoy to find him and snuff him out, so... That's why you got to have your, your face looking at the wall. Yep. You know, you have to have your back to the opponent so they don't see you. Yep, yep, exactly. Exactly. Smoke going to be committed onto mid cubby to allow for a nice rotation to come through mid for the attackers. Rutgers on match point right now. They desperately want to come away with this round win here because they know they've got Maryland on the back foot. This is Maryland's do or die time. Even if Rutgers doesn't come away with this win right here, they could take it to another map and try and clutch it out there. But they don't want to have to do that. They want to end this right here and right now. Three ults on the side of Maryland, though. We've seen this push up toward mid, and it hasn't worked out well last time around. Lockdown committed over there by Endless. And it does dissuade them momentarily. Uh, the question is, what is the play down the line? Do they just let that yeah. run out and then go in again? And I think that might be the case. A little bit of a, maybe a misplay coming out from Ivan. They've allowed themselves to get detained. This is just you a slow play, creep up toward B. Play. 33 Thank seconds you. left on the clock. You certainly have to make a move quick. We're going to hear the tour de force committed now by Rutgers. Pick comes in. Freda going to be successful. That's endless out of the fight. And with that out of play, there goes a lot of defensive util. Fluria picks coming in. That's going to be a trade. And that just plays to the side of Rutgers. A few seconds left to go for the plant. They have to do it now. A couple of picks come in. This could be it right here. KO is out of the fight. It's just down to six. Can they come away with something? No. It's going to be Rutgers going on to the grand finals for the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup.
Wow. And what a finish. You know, it, it started off very hot for Rutgers, and it continued that way, but there was a strong resurgence there for Maryland, and they seemed to be able to go the distance. Unfortunately, in the end, they weren't able to produce that final victory, or at least a singular map victory. In the end, it is a nice, cozy 2 nothing win there for Rutgers, and like you said, they're headed to the grand finals, and we're still wondering who they will meet in that uh, finals matchup because West Virginia and Concord still duking it out one to one. It's going to be an interesting one. Regardless, this was a great showing from Rutgers and equally solid showing out from Maryland. But in the end, they couldn't connect it. They couldn't close it out even on their own map pick of a set. No, they couldn't. A uh, great showing today from both teams. But like you said, the story of the day got to be Rutgers uh, carrying themselves two to zero to the grand finals. Can't wait to see who they are going to face there. And uh, before we close things out, uh, handsome host Lost, uh, any final words for the audience? Yeah, I think, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about what we saw in terms of how Rutgers was able to win it out. I've got the stats pulled up right now. Ooh. So many first bloods were found across the board here for, uh, for Rutgers. They were the majority shareholder in terms of those first bloods. They were always able to land those first kills, and it was by a large amount that they were able to open it up. And if you get those strong openers, you will have a strong finish, all likeliness pointing to that conclusion. And that's what we found. Strong opening in the first half, in the first kill of the rounds, and strong finish in the series as a whole. But that's going to do it for us for now. We'll be back in a little bit after this break for more CECC Valorant action.
Surprise, everybody! We are back! I said we were going to throw it to a break to get the next game underway, but we are going to have an interview instead. So, we've got Kwanzi in the booth, and uh, before anything else, first off, congratulations making it to the Grand Finals. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you all played great today. Now, um, can't wait to see uh, this next matchup. But first, I want to know uh, what happened on Ascent. You all were in the lead six to one, almost, you know, going into that second half with a tremendous lead. But Maryland was able to strike back. And uh, one big thing that I noticed is that next started showing up in the kill feed. So what kind of an adjustment did you all have to make as a team to be able to come back after such a strong resurgence from Maryland? Uh, honestly, we didn't really make any adjustments. I think it was just like, I think we were just trolling a little bit. We got excited, but <laughs> that's about it. Um, also, <laughs> we played this team before, so uh, one of our players, Ivan's like good friends with a couple of the players, so like we definitely wanted to win. I think we just wanted to win a little bit stronger this time, and we got a little bit excited, pretty much. Other than that, we know how they play. They know how we play. And I think we're the better team, so nothing too crazy. That was uh that was definitely demonstrated with the result of this matchup too. Nothing, not bad. But I want to talk about an adjustment that you made, you specifically, along with your uh your teammate, that being Beast Too Hype. Swapping the roles, you were previously on the omen for Haven, but you just yes, over and adjusted going into ascent. Why did you make that change? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if I can spill the secrets, but I'll just say that um, the way our comp is designed, we felt that me playing on the KO percent would make it a little bit easier for us to play a little bit more aggressive in certain points. Uh, Ricky is our like freshman player, and he's uh, definitely a star player on our team, but we felt like the Omen was a good pick for Ascent for him. Just let him have his gun out, let him frag. Okay, Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Can't give away all the secret sauce yet, at least not until you make it after these grand finals. But speaking of those grand finals, you spoke how you've already interacted with Maryland. What are your thoughts on the upcoming teams that being Concord and West Virginia? Do you have any thoughts on them? Um, Honestly, no. I, I don't think we've ever played against these two teams before this, uh, this league. We just played against West Virginia in Group B, and we honestly threw the game. <laughs> we were up, I think, like yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, so I think as long as we keep our composure and we play the way we want to play, it should be fine, whoever comes out of that. I mean, they're having a, a little back and forth, so whoever Excellent. comes out, well, I'm down to play. <laughs> awesome, glad to hear it. Well, uh, before we let you go, I just have one more thing I'd like you to know, and is that, uh, would you like to shout out anybody, teammates, friends, family, whoever? Um... Honestly, just shout out to my teammates. I think we had like a rough last semester, but I, th I think this semester we really found something that works. This meta kind of favors us in a lot of ways, and I think uh, I'm just glad that I have a great team. That's about it. And, uh, and our um, manager, David Murmur. Shout out to him. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming in to chat with us a little bit tonight after your win, and good luck to you in the grand finals as well. Thank you, thank you. You are welcome. Well, that's going to do it uh, for us for the moment, handsome host Losa. Before we send it to that extended break once more, any final words from you? No, at this point, you know, we saw a great play coming out from Rutgers, and I'm excited to see them in the grand finals, whoever it is, whether it's West Virginia or Concord. Big shout out to either of these squads, and of course, Maryland, who put in a great effort, unfortunately. The run ends here. But the run here for the CECC is far from over. And we'll be back with some more Valorant action right after this.
Welcome back to the CECC Mid-Atlantic Invitational. We're about to jump into the Grand Finals for the Valorant Series. And whoever comes out on top here is getting a ticket over to Atlanta for the Grand Finals over in the Gateway Arena over in May. It's going to be an exciting one to see. I'm Los, joined by Chad Lantis. Chad, how are you feeling about this upcoming matchup? We got Rutgers. We got West Virginia. It's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, I'm really looking to it, uh, forward to it, looking to it. I will be looking at it. I'm looking forward to it uh, for sure because I like seeing those final slots of the land getting filled. Out. Like, who is going to get their way over that direction? And uh, Atlanta, it's going to be a fantastic event. There's already a lot of incredibly strong collegiate teams already slotted in over there. So today we get to find out which additional strong collegiate team gets to go there. And we get to see that uh, through this bracket, the progression that we'll have here on screen, just a little bit of how we've got here as well, as we've seen Rutgers versus Maryland Collegiate Park 2-0 uh, on that matchup. And then on the other side of things, though, West Virginia 2-1 against Concord. A little bit closer matchup there for sure. But nevertheless, they got the W and got themselves into the grand finals. Yeah, not to mention Concord and West Virginia on their first map, they went into overtime. But once that happened, once Concord got their first W, West Virginia really turned on the gas and ended up doing the reverse sweep, winning it 2-1. to one. So that's going to be interesting. And now with the rematch between Rutgers and West Virginia, I'm liking to see who's going to come out on top because they faced off earlier in that group stage. They lost out. It was a best of one. And, you know, it is what it is. In the end, they were able to win it as that second seed and bring it over to the grand final. So the question is, in this rematch, are they going to be able to bring it back? Yeah, uh, West Virginia winning out 3-0, as you saw in the graphic uh, for the brackets. So if you just look at that and be like, okay, well, then West Virginia is going to be a favorite going into here. So I guess if you need somebody to be the underdog, you can just look at that and say it's Rutgers and root for them if you like rooting for the underdog. But, I mean... That's the best of one. Like anything can happen in a best of one. It's really tough to really say which team is stronger based on a singular map. So we get a best of three this time around. We get to really find out who comes out on top. And yeah, speaking of those three maps that we're going to jump into, we have those map picks. The first one is going to be Haven, picked by Rutgers, Ascent chosen by West Virginia. And if we need to get to it, it's going to be Icebox to finish this off. Yeah, a similar map pool that we saw in the previous matchup. Yep. But, you know, it's, it's standard. It's standard. Collegiate players, NA players, they love these three maps, and it's exactly what we'd expect. But... You know, with this case, we should see both of these teams finding comfort across the entire map pool. Yeah, the NA Classic for sure, just like you said, as we're going into the agent select. And based on NA Comfort, also Comfort picks for agents as well. Uh, Chamber being a big one, Killjoy, Sky, Omen, Sova. But what you don't standardly see are the no duelist compositions, which is exactly what Rutgers is bringing out here. And they say like Sky and Chamber are like pseudo duelists, but they're not real entry duelist so there's not going to be any explosive just throw yourself on site create that controlled chaos uh, uh strategy that you see a lot of teams very standardly use in valorant so it's gonna be a little more slower pace on the attacking side especially for rutgers and that's actually what we saw for rutgers the last time they took to the server in haven in the semifinals they were very slow to start it was going the way of their counterparts from maryland but as the map started off as it continued, they were starting to get hotter and hotter, and the second that they were on the defense, it was just too strong for them to even lose it. I want to yep. specifically point out Kwanzi, who <laughs> has been a menace on the Omen, especially when it comes to holding sights alongside Ivan. Those two, when they work together in conjunction, mm -hmm. it's a, it's amazing. It's a masterclass. I'm looking at Black Coffee being the person who really changes the tides in this match because... On the offense, uh, that will be the person that does exactly what I said with the Control Chaos uh, format. On defense, it's even the same case for retakes. If the players are all alive, they need somebody to get on the site first. Retakes are basically the same, same uh, mentality. So Rutgers, if they can get to a position where they can control a space, their composition should very effectively control that space. Now, with the double initiator set up as well, Sky and Sova, they should be able to get a lot of useful information to be able to work their way onto a site effectively. We have these trade marks set up at B site though, plus a couple of members of West Virginia are ready for this, especially agility. Ready to drop that pop flash from the KO coming out of the dark cover. It's gonna be interesting. Here comes the guiding light. Doesn't find anyone. They back off in the, oh, the response coming from agility though. 
Yeah, drop that fragment. I thought it was a pot flash. Held something in this hand, that's for sure. But uh, this trademark is still there as well. If anybody tries to make their way on site, that's why you see the silver ready to swing on that one. Rucker is not getting the same information that you really wanted. That guiding light, though, I mean, if you want to like, look at the little and minute details, a rechargeable ability that's still a win for Rutgers to be used versus the non rechargeable ability of the KOs fragment. So, technically, Rutgers in the lead so far <laughs> for this match, but it's very slow paced. <laughs> like, it's so slow paced that we're looking at that to commentate on. <laughs> Bro, that's, it's the trade war, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about the guns, it's the trade war. They got this dark cover up. Everyone's kind of slowly pacing through. Sora inside of it, not getting tagged by the Guiding Light. They take one back off, will be tagged by the arrow. They have the rendezvous to move away. Sora finds a second. However, Ivan brings out two of their own. And with only 12 seconds left, such a slow play, they finally get that plant. Some shock dart chip damage as well. I'll try to hold them off. Here's those flashes from Agility. Try to get themselves and access to the site, but everybody fell off from Wreckers. They left behind their utility and they planted for long, so they'll be able to just pop out and get some quick shots in if they ever hear that chime of somebody trying to defuse, just like Jay Kronk's doing right now. Yeah, they don't really have too much smokes to work with unless they have that cloud burst from Black Coffee, but they bought the Sheriff. They don't have the opportunity, but Chronic, they're just defusing. They, they got it. Why, wow. What happened? <laughs> Well, kind of what happened was the, the plant wasn't like perfectly planted for long. You saw it like tucked away towards the right, towards close to the default there. So they were just stuck around the corner that almost just didn't quite see the person defusing. Uh, Sora doing a lot of work for the team, of course, getting a double kill on the exit for the map side as well. So that made it even winnable for West Virginia at that point. And that rotation came through as well. I believe that was out of Ivan going through Garage to get Crossfire. But the plant was in a point where Ivan couldn't see the diffuser. Almost couldn't see the diffuser, so if they planted a little bit more towards exposed area, that would have been a world of difference. So something they'll have to look at for the future. Spike. Yeah, it was just Execute. being safe in the initial execute, getting that spike planted. So that's a risk you have to run. And yep. it ended up biting him in the back. Got a bit of a skirmish going down by A Lobby, but the real action is going through Garage, guiding light onto C. As they get into the garage window, no one's there to greet them. The fallback from Sawson, though. Definitely aware that that ground was lost and they might be playing for that right now. Oh! Perfect timing, but Sawson with the 3K lines him up and knocks him down. Sora, another one, leaving Ivan all alone. They've been able to come out with some great shots out of that headhunter, but Woo. not this time. Sora finishes it off. It's a nice little buddy ace between Sora and Sawson. Yeah, that was, uh... Sawson definitely having that awareness, like, yeah, they're going to be going for this. Jake Chronic, unluckily, was using an Owl Drew in a position that was not safe, but at least the crossfire is there. Completely trusted Sawson having the back just in case. And that's exactly what happened. But we have a buy-up now for Rutgers, uh, which I think is going to be a better uh, situation for them. It, it seems like a very one-sided match so far for West Virginia, but this kind of the nature of these, uh, of these compositions is... Uh, the slower moving comp without having that entry duelist for Rutgers, you really want to have those rifles to try and get that quick pick at longer ranges, especially to then be able to motion over towards the map control. You can't just explode and suddenly be in their face with a shorter range weaponry. We have that sight or that uh, space taken. Three players by A long. We're going to get in the face of Rutgers. And Kwanzi might be aware of it. They're very concerned with their flank as they just hold the angle. And you can see. Potential creep up agility as Sawson as well, but they're gonna take it slow. I like the dark cover. Those naturally just present a threat because you can be in it. The spray through? Are you kidding me? What? Even more. Kwanzi comes out swinging. However, there is help from agility. Agility would lose their life thanks to old Moe's, and now their position is revealed. They might be able to hold Star Wars, but that won't be the case. Beast too hype. Even it up, it's 2 1 2. That's insane. The spray through was good enough, but now it's going to be 2v2, like you said. It's just a ghost in hands with Jay Chronic, but in a position that Wrecker is not expecting at all. Has the timing on to Beast to hype. The plant will go down, but is the 2 for one in favor of West Virginia. Jay Chronic could even just fall back right now and grab a rifle if they wanted to, but they want to press the advantage right now. Sora, with the follow-up, let Jay Chronic with just a ghost in hand be the, like, sacrificial lamb, essentially, that trade, and have Sora be the one following up. While it might feel bad to be the <laughs> the solve of that situation, it's still an effective strategy. It's one that works for West Virginia to win the bonus oh. round of 3-0 to start off the series. 
So it's not done. <laughs> so it's not done. Got the half on it a bit more. And yeah, what a come up for this squad. They certainly have been dominant. And I was definitely skeptical of that forward play that we saw from Agility, Coffee, Saucin. But when they got that spray through the dark cover, that just changed my mind completely. And the ability for them to find even more kills along the way, despite losing great amount of numbers, was still nice. Yeah, I feel like it might have just been... A pr I, I didn't quite see what gave it away for Black Coffee. Uh, I didn't see any info gathering resources to say, yes, spray here right now. It might have just been a prediction thing, knowing that there's three of them there, so you can just go for a spray. Worst case scenario, you just lose like half a clip and you have so many bullets in this game anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But either way, it worked out beautifully for them. Zero point being thrown out when the strength of the KO, giving an idea of where those uh, attackers are going to be located to start off the round. But it's going to be as default... And one that Sora is responding to beautifully, finding that first frag on the Beast 2 Hype. The question is, can Ivan get away? I think they're sending off their rendezvous, yeah. and they will be able to escape. Ooh. And that's all they can do. A nice little, nice little trickery there to get away. Yeah, because... But in the, in the end, they still lost one. Based on those positioning as well, the rendezvous, I don't know if it quite makes it over. Actually, I haven't played Chamber enough. I don't know if it quite makes it over to the, the cubby for C Long to be able to like fake that they might be in there still. But uh, nevertheless, Sora just rotates off, has a read that they are rotating, and finds a third frag for the round. It's gonna be a flawless for West Virginia on the anti-eco. Seemed pretty casual for them that round, not gonna lie. Yeah, uh, I mean, it all started off with Sora, who is yeah. going absolutely insane right now, especially with that Tour de Force. They have been, they actually donated that rifle to one of their teammates in the previous round. Now they have that operator in hand, and they just, laid down death in that previous round so it's exciting to see what they're going to be able to do now that they are continuing this dominance here on haven yeah it definitely feels like west virginia university members are not going for cheesy angles that often as i say that they're pushing up through c long and playing with a paranoia push uh so go figure but overall they've been holding angles and just aware of the the slower speed of wreckers so they're not being like Scared of a potential aggressive play, but Agility does get caught out by Ivan. Nice guy in light to tell that somebody might be over here, and exactly they were pushing on the B site. Sorge a chronic popping off. That was so fast, Los. I thought I was setting up a play by play for you, but they just instantly just all died on the site. Thanks largely to J Chronic spray down. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> that's the power of West Virginia we're, we're seeing now. You oh my God. think that they're going to have a play. You think that they're going to stall out a fight. I mean, that's what we saw in at least the first round where they were setting up denial options to delay a fight. But that's not what we're getting anymore, especially if you have Rutgers just running it down mid, hoping to win those duels. Well, yeah. not with Jay Chronic in the way. Definitely not. Oh man, that's definitely heartbreaking because that was a big buy around for them as well. And they're going into that ping pong setup of big buy up, eco. Oh! Tag through the wall, shot through the wall. Sora just has Beast Type's number. Beast Type just cannot live through the opening parts of the round against this player. Yeah, what a way to go. <laughs> Not expecting that for sure. And they had some information that there was a player there. Wait a minute, Black Ooh. Coffee might have been able to catch them out going for the jump peak, hoping for some resistance to be found, but not going to be the case. I think that this player, this team so far, is confident enough to just take that peak. At least Quasi was able to get out of there just in the nick of time. It'll be rotated away. You see that read from West Virginia as well, rotating his Austin over towards C site. Try to bolster up the defensive line over there. Trademark is still there for B site itself. But Austin's going to wait for the exit of Garage while Agility watches for the exit uh, through the connector as well. Yet again, a read by Austin. Ready for them. Back it off. Quanzi might be able to spot the player on the platform, and there it Ooh. is. Agility goes down. A nice headshot. Out from the omen, but they have to watch out because Black Coffee will be on the flank. However, they won't make the full-on commitment. I guess waiting for a bit more presence to be felt on some other sites. You can kind of see the records is definitely trying to find some comfort in slowing things down. Which has worked out so far as trade one for one overall. The trademark in window will catch out Black Coffee. The cover will is be able to oh, man. Oh, and everyone's already dead! Stop what? instantly, what? dude. What? This can't keep happening. We just die instantly, all of them. That's insane. 
They can't keep getting away with this, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Black Coffee just finds two easy picks while Jake Chronic is getting that Hunter's Fury action in. While they were able to find that spike plant, it just, what else can they do with it? Dang. So a good setup with the uh, Ryu, with the Recon Bolt, things like that. They did get an answer back with a frag there from Quanzi, but once they got to the site, Hunter's Fury from C is so good for covering for the plants. People are just swinging through and getting the spray down. It is the anti eco round as well, so not the best weaponry for Rutgers to answer back with once the challenge was there from West Virginia University. But now we're going to a timeout called by Ivan on the side of Rutgers. Definitely makes sense. They call a timeout. They go into another big buy up round. They have four ultimates to work with. And honestly, I want to see them slow it down, maybe go for default more, or just try to work with like a two or three player skirmish uh, setup where they set the pot flashes. Uh, from the sky or like, use Paranoia of the Omen to try to just create space. And once they earn a lot of map control, use that to work with to wake the way on site. Try to find a pick or two as well. Because they've tried a couple times now where they just throw themselves on site. And we saw like with the J-Chronic uh, Chronic spray down two rounds ago, just now kind of again uh, with Black Coffee doing it on B site. Rutgers team composition doesn't allow them to just create space with an entry duelist. So they all slowly just stampede onto a site which is really easy for players as skilled as these West Virginia University members to just spray you down as you try to walk right in. Yeah, brute force is not the way that Rutgers is going to be able to win it out. And I actually got a chance to speak to Quanzi after they won their previous match in the semis. And they played against West Virginia. They said their main issue was that they were throwing rounds because they were a bit nervous in the beginning, but maybe they can start winning things out by spraying through the smoke. Here comes the Hunter's Fury. Ivan walking in the fire because they aren't going to get hurt too bad. And that's another kill for them. They could walk on through to B, but Sauson, they're causing some problems over in Garage. That's the spike carrier down, but Ivan doesn't give a damn. They've gotten three kills so far and secured B. Bomb still not on the side. The spike is now rotating in from Kwanzi, but still a two versus three. If they get window control, that'll be huge for West Virginia University. That turret is not useful at all anywhere because Kildred did fall, so they won't know about people rotating over into window. This might be in a situation where almost gets caught by surprise, but tucked away behind the stairs. I don't know if Black Coffee is going to be checking this quick enough. Oh, nobody else is punishing even, them. Even if they do, even if they find someone in the window, it's going to be too late. Yeah, almost. They get the shot. Turn into a two on two, but we have such low health on Sauce, and a single bullet will be enough to ruin them. Dark cover put into place. They're gonna jump right in. They're gonna teleport in. Black Coffee finds one Sauce and gets the last, and they still continue the win streak with seven rounds in a row. Wow. Yeah, just nobody watched Window. I mean, they had almost sitting under it, but nobody was actually punishing if somebody goes, jumps out, and peeks it. So they can swing out from the B main and just shoot, shoot them down from afar or something like that. That setup wasn't there. There was no proper crossfire from Rutgers to be able to punish any kind of advantage that these two members of West Virginia University was trying for. And once they got into the site, it was just a lot of just playing around those dark covers, shenanigans, and just outplays on the microscopic level, essentially, that Sauston came on top alongside Black Coffee. 7-0. The Hunter's Fury was used by Rutgers, but they still have... The Seekers, they still have a lockdown that you can use, especially get onto an A site. If they get control over into the sewers, there's no Hunter's Fury from West Virginia to answer back with it. Okay, wait a minute. They're getting a bit too confident on the side of West Virginia, but Jay Chronic fires back and has the equalizer. Ivan pushing through the sewers, got behind them. The angle wasn't covered. Sustin. All of their eggs on the A long basket. But maybe Sauston can ease the pressure. That won't be the case with the lockdown being used, not finding anyone. We've got Sora in the flank, and the Seekers are going to give them the information that they need. Yeah, Jake's up Sora. He won't be able to get with the flank. It kind of seemed like for a little bit there that the members of Rutgers weren't really expecting a flank play, but just based on timing and being able to use the Seekers, they'll definitely know. Standard Storm's going to make it so hard to get on site with an operator in hand. The go confirmed. They definitely are in short now, which I feel like Sora didn't really have to shoot that one, but... Here we are, one versus two, so we're with a lot of guesswork in a one versus two situation. It's gonna be tough. And there it is. Frutta has been known to hold down sights. They get the post plant, but really with a 3k to start things off. Finally, we have Rutgers on the map. It only took about eight rounds for them to find their stride, and certainly a lot of overconfidence coming from West Virginia on that. 
Yeah, they're just positioned so far forward without utility to support each other. I mean, Jake Karnik had a fantastic spray down, as we've already seen multiple times so far this map, but still, that's just too many members of Wreckers to deal with that situation without having proper map control either, because Sewers A Short was given up so quickly as well to Iphens. So, definitely around giving up. Ivan finding continued success as well. Wreckers getting some wind of their sails, getting some momentum gathered. Black Copy getting pushed off from A Short as well. And A Site might be the play. That might be the solution that they were looking for. Just play for a pick and A long and get control of short. Play up to the site. The trade out is good as well for Rutgers. Keeps advantage in their favor. Now we have in the back line, in hell, Quanzi, nobody spotted them. They must have assumed it was up in heaven, but no, it was right in hell. They shot him directly in the back of the head, and now it leaves only Sawston, as well as they performed so far in this map, to win a 1v4. It's going to be incredibly difficult. Yeah, uh, we've seen them get three 4Ks in the past, but this is... Uh... <laughs> This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. Does the dark cover try to step play as well or try to continue making uh, the baits? You see all the spray-ins because Rutgers has to give respect to that at the very least. But once they didn't see any tags or any notion of motion in the dark cover, they said, you know what? Might still be in heaven. There they were. That's where Beast 2 Hype found them. Right now, West Virginia needs to figure out what they need to do about a site because they just keep giving up frags. They keep giving access away to Rutgers. That's true, they might have to play a bit more back, but I think the major issue was allowing Quanzi to teleport. They must have assumed that sound cue was incorrect, and we've seen a bit of omen trickery. At least that's what we saw from Sawston. They attempted to do something similar and play with those sound cues, but that was a major setback for their defense, and certainly won't allow that one to happen again. So it uh, looks like their solution is to send another player over to A-Long play with. And it works out so far as it got two for one. But Kwanzi yet again tucked away. Finds two. Make that Kwanzi. three. Kwanzi popped off with a but they don't expect. Jay Chronic. Oh, but Ivan's there. They've got their back. In the end, Sawston alone again. Hoping to clutch this one out. It's a lot more doable this time in a 1v2. But the second those smokes go down, they decide, nope. We're out of here. Let's move on to B. Oh, it's a tough situation for Assassin as well, because the last two members alive are the Trademark Wielder, the Turret Wielder, Killjoy, and Chamber up. That Assassin can't really make a flank play happen against them, but push up because doesn't know if, even though the steps are walking away, to go on the distance where Norris gets cut, has to just confirm on A-Site if they're going to be here or not. Might, at this point, honestly, go for a save because they have to go across the entire freaking map at this point, but you have a round lead at this point. Their economy should still be pretty good, uh, so... Going to go for the play, and honestly, in a one versus two, reasonable enough to try and make this play happen. Yeah, you might as well send it. As you said, they've got the money, they've got the attempt, and what you want to do is just remove any possibility of them being able to bring guns. Mm -hmm. At the very end, even if you can't win the round, at least stop them from having the money. Oh, and a nano swarm damage. Chamber on the backside. A bit of uh, chaos there. The timing. Second one. Tough. There it is. Ivan just rotating around the nearest one, stalling out for Sawston, not being able to make any plays, not doing a dark cover shenanigans. Great side by Rutgers. They are definitely getting some momentum right now. That's what they need. I mean, it's all a game of steamrolling. We've seen them try to steamroll again, and this is another one of those times that they're getting way too confident in their pushes. They want to stop Rutgers from having any map control, and in so in doing so, they're losing out rounds themselves. Instant Hunter's Fury answer because Rutgers so many rounds in a row now three. The fact that they've been successful, them have just stacked up an A lobby and pushed through and getting a frag or two, but. Hunter's Fury is to throw them off, force them over to play for C. Sawson finally will be able to make a fight happen with the rest of the team alive. Okay, Sawson sending some shots through the dark cover. If they can stop him at this point, it will be good. I mean, we haven't seen a great execute out of Rutgers to go on to C before. And I'm excited to see what they can pull off. Because the last time they made an attempt, it was certainly stopped by Sora. Out with the Tour de Force looking down long. And at this point, they're choked up again. Those dark covers are going to keep continuing back. Good information. Only catches the kill joy with a zero point information, but at least this way. One, Rutgers won't actually have that free turret coverage. No, anybody just stuck into lobby. So they have to send some time clearing that out. And because of that uncertainty, they're thinking, you know what? 
That's going to spend a lot of time trying to clear that out. So we still have coverage over C Long. Let's try and make a play happen at C. That's where they go. That's where West Virginia is expecting it. Austin with the paranoia right outside of this dark cover. They send it out, only good for one, but Ivan and Kwanzi light up the stage. And this is a site execute in a perfect form. However, the post plane setup allows Jay Chronic at least to spam through the box and the smoke. And they could walk into the back of site undetected, unbeknownst to the rest of the crew. Almost doesn't see it. Coffee gets another one, and now they only have to deal with the lone Frutta to end it out. This cover, this cloudburst will be able to save the day. The shock start stop the peak. And the Thanks. second front of shows their face. Jake Chronic is ready for the headshot. What a fantastic retake. Black Hawk and Jake Chronic just basically just found two 1v1s. And then instantly won them in a way that the members of Rutgers couldn't respond well enough. They couldn't quite get there into the setup in time. That Spike was playing a little bit more exposed. Uh, we saw in that first round of this entire series of where it wasn't quite set up perfectly for long coverage. But... Kwanzi got shut down by J. Chronic instantly in the explosion on the site by J. Chronic Black Hobby. Didn't allow Rutgers to get the setup that their team composition really thrives on. Yeah, that, that was a great attempt in that black cover. Hoping with all those players on the other side to be able to find a great response. But Thanks. in the end, it was done by the rest of the squad. They did their part in terms of clearing out the site for the retake. But in the end, we have another pretty wide setup coming in from Rutgers. Yeah, not playing as far forward onto the A site. The utility being shut down a little bit there. Alarm bots left behind just in case of any rotation over. They have two trademarks and alarm bots. Three alarm bots essentially to notify of any flanks going through. So it's going to be hard for West Virginia to make things happen with that, which is why they don't really look for flanks that often unless those members of workers have died. But right now, set up in garage. Agility. Ready to pop flash and try to make a play happen. Okay, there was a TP inside. B, I believe in. Yeah, Kwanzi got inside. Regardless, Agility is cutting down the numbers. Maybe Kwanzi hoping to oh. shoot down, but they can't hit anybody. Sawston fires back. The spike is planted, but Fruit is all alone. I don't think they have enough Nano Swarms to send some more out. They're pinched. They're cut off. We have the walls closing in on them. How many players are going to send out to try and fight them? Sure, front is good for one. Maybe they can get a second, but it won't be done. The first half ends 9-3, to three, and what a wild way to pinch off that last player. Yeah, that was such a tough spot for Frodo to be in because of just being exposed out there and realizing they're getting pinched. They had to fall off because there's a, a crazy person to stay out there completely exposed and they're like having to deal with being flanked like that. So they were systematically forced off in West Virginia so beautifully. I like that moment as well uh, from that second half. The highlight moment that I didn't get to talk about yet was when Kwanzi won the site in the second to last round, getting onto C site. The shrouded step took them like past the paranoia that Sassen put put out. So Sasa thinks everybody's going to be uh, blinded. Kwanzi teleports past it and is right close up uh, next to Sasa anyway. So it was like a this weird situational timing thing that just played out. It was, it was fun to watch. Definitely. And while well, we had Kwanzi with an attempt in the previous round, almost was able to secure it if they could land a shot. But now we've got Ivan. They're stuck in. Fragment does force them to hit the rendezvous, but now they've got a ton of information. The cavalry is arriving, so this is going to be an all-out brawl here on the A side, and it'll start with Sora picking off almost, and they're going to try and get some more shots with a headhunter through the smoke, but it doesn't really matter because they've got help. They've got support. The only one who's able to bring one down will be Beast to Hype, but it doesn't amount to much. Oh, man, that fragment almost backfired nicely because all of uh, West Virginia had to wait for that to go away before they pushed onto the site, which allowed time for Rutgers to start working over, but Rutgers members didn't quite get there in time. They got those first initial frags, and West Virginia members were able to spread out and get crossfires just in time. It's so hard for Rutgers members to be able to stand their own ground. This is going to be a half where I feel like Rutgers still isn't out of this game, even though it's a 10-3 uh, situation, and things largely have looked heavily in favor of West Virginia overall in this match. But still, Rutgers has such a heavily focused defensive composition. This is probably going to still be another really tough round because of pistols. They haven't been able to really buy full util either, but once they get full utility, that's when this composition comes online. online. So if they win this round, amazing. Uh, but either way, they're going to look a lot better going to the next. Well, they have some heavy presence by Garage, and they're backing off for a little bit. I guess waiting for the cavalry to come, waiting for some backup to help them out. And it will get a plane over there for West Virginia. This is going to be a slow retake. Yeah, definitely a slow retake. This is a, it's going to be a hard full positional. They're ready for the flank as well for members of West Virginia. 
And all the retake happening now. Sasa and Julia getting frags. Couple going the way of Rutgers. So they do some damage, but it's not going to be all that much. And uh, West Virginia is still looking really nice and healthy going into this bonus. And that's one of those issues that we see from playing it slow. I mean, that... that allowed you to not have that much space. We've seen how all of those players got into garage. They were clustered up and only one player, I believe it was Ivan might have been on the flank or almost, but it was too late. You had multiple people looking on your flank. You knew they were in the garage and the walls again were closing in. So there wasn't much mobility for them. Oh, we did see two frags get the way of Rutgers. It just wasn't enough. But now they have some rifles in hand. Maybe this is going to be their time to pop off. They have a much stronger defensive capability. Yeah, look at all this utility is laid out as well. They never swore for the entry. Turret set up for cross and awareness. Try to dash on the side of Black Coffee. Doing that controlled uh, chaos, that cr space creation. It's working out so far for West Virginia. But Frana with a spray down answers right back. Black Coffee still alive, but really hard situation for the win out on. Now it's only Sora, last alive with the headhunter. Maybe they can make some magic happen. It is a 1v3. They can just isolate these headshots. Maybe it can work out, but Frutta denies it again. Well banged to solidify the 3k, and Rutgers is showing signs of life here in the second half. Yep, everything changes when they get rifles in the hand for this composition, so they can have a lot of advantages when they hold longer angles, as well as using all that utility as well. That's composition really coming online, especially, of course, you know, if Frutta... Gets a really nice spray down and spray control. Nice transfer as well. Finishing things off against Sora. But we'll have to see how this composition really continues to perform. As a couple of judges go in the hands of these members of Rutgers. No armor being bought by Quanzi, question mark. Uh, they definitely could have bought that up. But either way, West Virginia will have to deal with Ivan holding a long. Yeah, they'll get that freebie. Get away with the tour or the, the rendezvous. Now they're sending out the zero point, getting suppression. But no information really gained. And they'll back off of that. It's a nice kill to walk away if you're Rutgers, and maybe you can convert that into a rifle if you want to retake that space. Yeah, it's such a, I mean, once you realize that the chamber has a setup over on A site, you're going to have to assume Killjoy probably has a setup on C. She has every round so far, and if you have a double sentinel setup, you just naturally split them across. Spreading out, getting some shots down, trying to destroy all that utility. The narrow swarms will slow down a little bit, but still going to be a 5v4 retake on site. Yeah, we can see that Frutta just hanging out by back of C Link. They're waiting for the rest of their squad. And this time they aren't all clustered in Garage. They have a lot of options. They have a great pinch potential to work with. So it all begins, I believe, with a guiding light from Beast to Hype. Now that they've got some support, there it goes. Black Coffee, they're away to look away from it. But they still get hit with the paranoia. Cloud Cover to save themselves, but Agility and Sora do everything by themselves and bring it to map point. Dang. Yeah, the paranoia comes through, the guiding light as well. All the, like throwing all our flashes and everything we possibly can, but still that zero point came in as well, which negated a lot of the utility usage from these players, which honestly from a Sova chamber and killjoy is not gonna be a little bit tough. The Sova utility for like a recon bolt beforehand would have been really nice. That actually would have been a really big deal, but in the, the day, it's a crossfire step and just perfect like a very cohesive explosive response from West Virginia where they just exploded into a crossfire set. Make it so hard for Rutgers to really figure out who do I shoot at. Okay, this time around, they're going to have a much stronger... They're just offensive. sending it, man. No, <laughs> no rendezvous. They're trying to end it. It's 12 to 4. One more round to finish it off, and it starts with Sora removing the lone defender of A, Ooh. but Beast too hype has that intuition. Sprays through the smoke and evens it out. The spike is planted, but it certainly isn't out of their hands yet. The Seekers get a bit of information, put some pressure on them. Guiding Light doesn't find what? any Kwanzi as a, a great shadow step if you're on the side of West Virginia, but almost is going crazy. Unfortunately, they aren't crazy enough as Jay Chronic finishes it out with a 3K of their own, and West Virginia is going to win on Rutgers' map choice of Avon. I didn't quite see if Quanzi had a Dark Carver in that moment or not. I have to imagine he did because I didn't really see them being used otherwise. I might have just missed it. Uh, but if the Dark Carver was there and then tries to step into it, all right, solid play because you can create a threat there and everybody has to look at that Shroud step of the Dark Carver while also dealing with people exploding on the site. That would have been huge, but completely exposed. A little tough. Honestly, West Virginia looking very, very impressive in that match. Uh, I think the composition was advantaged. Uh, There's a lot more towards the meta. It's the meta for a reason kind of situation. Not that you can't look outside the box, but usually when you look outside the box, you're going to run into some difficulties and some difficulties that Rutgers couldn't overcome.
Yeah, and this is a composition they like to run even when we're going on to Ascent. Rutgers doesn't opt in for the Duelist, and maybe that's an adjustment they should be looking toward. But we'll see if they can bounce back after this performance after we head over to Ascent right after this quick break. So don't go anywhere. The CECC Valorant action continues. And welcome back to the CECC finals here for the Valorant Mid-Atlantic Invitational. We just wrapped up our first map of Haven with West Virginia University. They really came out on top 13 to 4. It's a, a bloodbath, essentially. I said it was going to be before, but I was not expecting it to this degree. Considering that West Virginia really taking control on the map picked by Rutgers. Chad, what are you thinking going into map 2 of Ascent? I'm really hoping Rutgers uh, either changes the composition to add an entry duelist, uh, or they could start on defense. I think it's really important that with the compositions they run with no du defense, or no duelist, I should say, they start on defense, because we saw 
those compositions very naturally have a hard time on offense for the reasons we just saw in that last match where if a defending team can get a read on where you're coming from, players like Jay Cronic can just spray you down. Players like Sauce can just spray you down. Make it so hard for you to actually get onto the site with enough players alive to actually play a post plant if you get there. Uh, so having to start on offense, they had a really struggle fest on that side of things. They found some success on A side a little bit, but the response was there by West Virginia. They made adaptation. And on defense side of things, they just didn't have breathing room or just the morale momentum or anything like that either. So it's really hard for them to get really moving on their favored half even. So if they can start on defense, on ascent, that'd be a huge deal for them. And looking at the Mac pick fans, that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, we are going to ascent. They will be on the defense. And historically, their eight lineup, their composition is similar to what we saw previously. They like to run the double sentinel, double initiator, but rather than having the sky, they normally run with the KO. I mean, it will be Quanzi. As Beast 2 Hype and Quanzi like to swap roles, as we saw back on the previous series. So no longer on the omen. They should be based on history. Yeah, there it is, the KO. Yeah, that's fair, because uh, the flashes handle really differently, so it can be really awkward if you go back and forth between Sky and KO a lot of times, uh, whereas Omen is a little bit more of like a, we will always play Omen so we can get used to it, but then how like the tempo works with KO and Sky varies a lot to where it is pretty common to see people to switch just like that, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Quanzi was a player that popped off a lot with the Omen plays, especially with getting to creative locations and getting multi-kills for the team. Uh, that create a lot of advantages for them, especially in those rounds that they did win on offense uh, for Rutgers. So uh, we'll see if Quanzi can get some like nice like self-pop flash options or something like that going into this next map. Yeah, it should be exciting. And specifically, you know, calling back to the previous interview with Quanzi, they said Beast 2 Hype, they like to put them on the Omen. They wouldn't fully give me the secret sauce of why <laughs> they like to make those decisions, but they said... That's the young gun. That's their freshman player, the newbie on the team. And they really rely on some aim shots coming out of that player. So they want him to just send out smokes, hold angles, maybe use the paranoia, and kind of do what we saw Jay Chronic pull off in the previous round. Just mow anyone down who wants to enter their site. Start off the defense. You already see all this utility from Killjoy set up out of B main. I wonder if this Al Jones going to see all of the nano swarms, perhaps. Lower yourself down a little bit, but just say use the turret. That still does give a giveaway that, yes, there's going to be kill drain utility here. Deal the utility uh, turret just away. Flashing out, pushing on a site. But with this crossfire, Rutgers has a trap set. They're ready to pounce. Ooh, nice use of that information from Frutta. Getting the shots through the smoke, and maybe they can continue it completely unseen. You can't kill what you can't see, but now that they are revealed, so are the deaths. Jay Chronic shooting across from Maine, but... That won't be enough. Ivan continues to rain their terror as Rutgers is able to hold off the first round. Yeah, it was definitely a great read on the B site hit. That Killjoy utility slowed them down just enough because they had to deal with turret first. By the time they got there, Rutgers already rotated on, had a crossfire naturally set up. And it was really hard for these members of West Virginia to actually make it onto the site and make the place happen, especially with little util, things like that, of course. Also, it was pretty crazy how quickly West Virginia was able to run up through mid and take control of the market. I mean, I know it was a more relaxed play, but wild that they have that ability. And again, they only put a simple trademark in pizza. It should be still enough. Uh, it's very oh, way back when Chamber wasn't in the in the game at all yet. It was very common that we saw Killjoys who just drop a alarm bot in pizza. Uh, Cyphers drop a tripwire in pizza. Trademarks and pizza allows the alarm bot to cover for B main. So the Killjoy Chamber setup actually is incredibly strong, especially on Ascent because it so heavily favors people who play for mid control. So you just leave that completely exposed, chilling, and you can stack a lot more heavily on the sites instead of themselves instead of having to relegate one member of your team over towards mid. Now we have this rotation towards B. Maybe they got that sound cue. There's a zero point, doesn't find anyone, but there's still plenty of utility use and they're gonna get ripped to shreds from almost on the, oh my God, the angle from CT. It's just too much. The Ares is unstoppable, especially when you're shooting through the smoke. Go Fred again, a nice little swing around, almost finishing things off again. True the name saying, you almost had me, but not quite 20 HP. We'll be able to live just long enough. That's the last time I'm going to make that name pun. Don't worry. And uh, 2-0 for Rutgers. Nice start, especially considering they're on defense. So this is like 
the bread and butter for the composition picks is defense, and this is perfect. Literally starting off on the side. I think you can make the pun at least like two more times in the series. Two more times? Okay, bet. I'm marking it down. <laughs> One notch. I got two more. Okay. There we go. Nice. Now we got some rifles in the hands of West Virginia, and they are here to play. I'm waiting for someone to try and peek out on mid. They want to get those initial picks, but all this information gathering will find nothing. But that's information enough. Eventually, they'll read the pattern of this kind of laid-back passive defense from mid. But it really is going to come down to Ivan and Sora. Who's going to win it out? No determination, but a lot of damage going on to the defender. Sneaky, sneaky, using dark cover while sitting there in A main. Dark cover for mid, making it seem like maybe we're going to go for a B side play, play through mid itself. But no, it's going to be a tree side. But the long bot's going to give everything away. A flash to get inside, but while they're too busy shooting at the alarm bot, hype is there for the shot with the sheriff. They're going to put that dark cover back on main. Continuing to hold this angle as Kwanzi defends the tree deftly and even forces out a rotation. They don't want to deal with this anymore. They have to back off. They've lost way too much in the process. Yeah, that's a rough spot to be in. And they just saw if they go towards B site, B site was sitting there with the sheriff. We'll be able to grab the rifle off the fallen members of West Virginia. Dark cover will be able to hinder any members of Rutgers from stopping them from rushing through. There's a spray down with the Ares, but ahead. not going to stop them completely. Still, there's two members here for Rutgers. Oh, Pop Flash, Sora is completely blinded, but they don't decide to peek. Maybe they still hold this angle, but it's all Sauston who gets the job done. They still have to deal with Ivan, who's sitting in the back line. Maybe they'll be able to clear it out. No! Ivan's there. They still have the plant. They have to deal with that aspect first, and now they can clear things out. But can they really? It's all up to Sauston at the moment, but no. In the end, there's just too many players on the defense for the retake, and Rutgers will solidify their third round here on Ascent. West Virginia may have made this map pick, but honestly, this team composition from Rutgers is so much stronger on Ascent, and we're seeing exactly why. It's because there's basically three or four different ways you actually go towards a site. Haven, there's five. There's a lot more spread out of where you have to put all your utility as a team. But with this heavy defensive composition, Double Sentinel, all this kind of situation, you can just consolidate all of that utility that completely brings the members of West Virginia into a crawl to where they're going to really need to slow things down, clear utility properly before they can actually go and explode on a site. Because if they can't at least get a read of where this utility is to deal with, they're going to have such a hard time making it onto a site successfully. Especially if members like Ivan are sitting there with their operators watching through mid or people like almost just spraying down with an omen uh, or Odin through B main, but still safe round for West Virginia. At this point, all you could hope for maybe remove a rifle from the defenders from Rutgers. This cost them a little bit more money, and they still have plenty of it even going into that fifth round. And if you decide or happen to be able to get one of those frags, it isn't that big of a hit to their economy. And they're all stuck here in Maine. They're just hoping someone goes for an ego peak, looking for something more. Wait, uh, hype! Expecting flashes, but they got a shot to the face instead. Kwanzi now going for the pop flash. Expecting more, but they get less. The Chronic had the opportunity to take Ivan toe to toe, but with the operator, you gotta go. Yeah, West Virginia's been leading with a pop flash so far, so Beast just on that reach thinking they're gonna keep leading with a flash. Here we go, but Julie's like, nah, <laughs> this is a safe round. I'm gonna save these flashes for next round, maybe, or uh, see what happens. So, swung through, got the frag, good read on the situation, at least. A bad read for Beast to hype, but happens, man. 50 50 guess in those situations. That's one of those things just like you look silly if you get caught by it, but if they did leave the pop flash, then Beast looks like a, the smartest player on the in the world. <laughs> you know, so it's just like sometimes you go for the harder reads, you get guess wrong. All good. So we call the biz unlucky, but now unlucky. luck has got nothing to do with it. They've got that no command agility running on through. No one is trying to deal with this. They all back off, and this will be sight for free. Or at least it did cost them one ultimate. They should be able to get the plant. Prana, unsure of whose omen that happens to be, but regardless, they're able to stay alive. And they remove Jilly. Now they can counteract with the lockdown. The Hunter's Fury can counteract that, though, as it's been destroyed and some damage going off as well. Get some information from Jay Chronic. Three versus five on the side for this post plant. West Virginia on the back foot. Oh, and they'll continue to fall and stumble onwards, but maybe Sawston can work some magic. Unfortunately, they're only good for two, and this is five in a round 
or five rounds in a row here for Rutgers University. They are certainly flipping the script from what we saw back on Haven. Yeah, in front of having a little bit of a, a, a flutter of a situation, just not having an easy read of who to actually shoot at, but finally figures out at the very end what they needed to. Overall, a fantastic uh, retake situation. Honestly, Los, this is a composition uh, that if people, a little bit of lore on the NA region of uh, Valorant, where a team called Virtuoso made the no duels composition really popular with the coach Vanders, who was like, oh, high IQ composition, and they smashed every ascent. They completely dominated the defensive side, but many times teams made a comeback happen on offense. And we're going to probably see a similar situation here where West Virginia needs to at least get breathing room to have a fighting chance, and it will actually have a pretty good opportunity to make a comeback happen on the offense. But it could be a similar situation to what we saw in Haven to where if they don't get enough of a breathing room, they might not have enough time to make the proper reads happen. Got to get some wins out. They can continue through on to mid, and at least getting some picks, and... Took down two here for Rutgers. They could just keep slowing it down and deny information, keep them guessing, keep them sweating. As you can see, they're very spread out over on the defensive side of Rutgers. Yeah, so far, West Virginia is still having just such a hard time getting through the utility. And with an operator being in the, in the hand of Ivan as well as this Odin that just sprays through these paper thin walls. Those just feel like more utility, essentially. That just slows you from being able to get on site. From the shadows, being used by Sasson. So they do have side access now. But they still have to deal with these members' Rutgers making their way in. As almost continues getting frags with Odin. It's It it almost feels unfair when you're running up against almost with the Odin. And it, you don't really know what to do about it. You want to hold your ankles on site. But even so, Sawston... Decides to take the advantage, press it. They don't know about agility. Rutgers. Now it's just hype, but agility with the flank from Market. They save the day, and finally they can breathe a sigh of relief. They have their first round here for West Virginia. Agility at 13 HP just completely tucked away in a super deep rat angle on the rotations. At least just for, for a rotation watch for if anybody goes through mid or can swing around if people commit through market from a uh, defending spawn. And that's exactly what happened. Had the flank and beast had no idea we were coming out on that timing. And that's another situation of just unlucky, really, just beast having to be forced in a situation where you need to make some hard reads and the read just wasn't there. But still, overall, honestly, that's the two deaths for beast of hype. Otherwise, it's been having a fantastic game. Rutgers especially doing exactly that. They have a front of shadows themselves as well this round, so they will have a really fast rotation, faster than they already have been doing uh, for whatever West Virginia tries to attack through, which looks like mid, if that's for right now at least. It is such a difficult place for West Virginia to try and attack. If you look at the mini-map, you see every single choke every single angle that could possibly be taken here by West Virginia, there's a piece of utility waiting for them. So any move they make is going to be stifled. It will be red. If they can cut noise and default again or something like that, it could pull off members of Rutgers, but if they commit too fast, Rutgers already made the rotation. They're already willing to make the fast rotation happen. They've proven this, but West Virginia trying to bring the fight to them. Oh, they almost walk in. Sora almost goes onto the platform, but they decide not to. They want to watch their back, and that was the right call. Beast to hype. Want to walk through market and maybe get a cheeky flank. That won't be the case. Ivan somehow walked into B main and has the tour de force. Well, they're completely surrounded in the end. Guess Austin there from the flank will eliminate them. That was a little bit of a wacky scenario, but regardless, they waddled their way on through mid and found this second round for themselves. So far, the MO for Rutgers is let's over-rotate and hard-hold the site as long as we can and do the best we can for doing so. So West Virginia making an adaptation to that, has a crossfire set up for people who do make the rotation happen, uh, and also just expected people to be holding the angles and just come in ready for that approach from Rutgers answered beautifully nice adaptations for west virginia so far that's exactly what they need to do get some rounds on the board so when they go on the defensive side which will be a little bit more statistically advantaged towards them they should have a lot easier time making their uh comeback happen but rutgers this is their time they need to shine right now oh. be so hyped trying to get greedy on map control and sauce and punishing him greatly Wow, what a great read. I, I was a little bit skeptical on what they were using that shrouded step for, and then I saw the angle they were holding. 
And the second that round started, you can see Beast was walking on through. And that was exactly what they needed to open up a site. No more nanos. No more alarm bots. No turret to stop them from walking on through with a dark cover. Would have provided a bit more cover if they didn't walk on to heaven. So a little a little bit uh a bit of over aggression. Regardless, they have the spike down. They have that suppression. Maybe they can have a bit more safety. You cannot peek Ivan in this moment. Saw Sims last cheeky angle with a pop flash coming out of Kwanzi. Forced them to have to drop off. So now it's going to be standard positions, but still working out just fine for them. Okay, wow, agility going, checking every angle. Kwanzi there to remove them from play. But at the end, Sawston has their back, and we're seeing West Virginia climb and claw their way back and potentially walk into an equalizer. At this moment, the economy is looking a bit scattered, a bit rough there for Rutgers. Honestly, a lot of this, these rounds have been Sawson having the read and just outplaying Beast Hype on positioning a lot of time. It's just Beast Hype trying to go for that map control, but it's fallen from there. After that, it was an explosion that found Freda, and once Freda fell, all that utility is gone. Nothing slowing down the speed of West Virginia University. Getting onto A side beautifully, setting it the full post plan. Such a tough situation for Rutgers to come out on top of. Rutgers now trying to continue making adaptations, realizing their old play style has been countered. They're trying to get more aggressive through mid, but the trademark announces of Ivan's presence. They're waiting for him over in Gelato. Meanwhile, the spike is getting planted. It's going to be another full setup for West Virginia. Oh, but that suppression is exactly what they needed. They had the flank, but now with that... Um, zero point. They figured it out. Even so, Frutta with the Sheriff is an absolute menace. They can't deal with it. They brought in the lockdown. Agility wants to destroy it. But the second they swing, they lose out on it. Jay Chronic, though, has something to say about it. And with Sora in their back head, they get it done. Kwanzi now sending out a zero point of their own. Looking for a shot to get one up to Jay Chronic. But there's not much time left. And even when they go for the defusal, Sora is there lying in wait to get the kill. Yeah, they last saw Sora and Tree as well, but Kwanzi with not a lot of time to work with and just kind of just assumes that maybe Sora was trying to make a rotation happen towards heaven or something like that to get more advantageous angles. Sora, no, I'm just going to hang out with Jay Kronk, my boy. We're going to sit here, do a crossfire of your door, peek out here once you go for the defuse, and that worked out perfectly for West Virginia. So these adaptations, the reads, it honestly feels like West Virginia is in the heads of Rutgers right now, like as if they just downloaded their strats mid-game. When you get your read on your opponent, can figure out exactly what they want to do and that's going to make it so much more difficult dodging and zero point not in the position to be spotted through that dark cover if we see beast to hype walk up again and die again that is going to be such a critical loss and maybe black coffee in this moment get Kwanzi out in the middle of grabbing their utility caught with their pants down and now they've isolated off beast to hype there's no one left really to defend a site Especially if you have Sawston looking down one, they know exactly where this player is going to be. At least a read on potential of being there because he didn't clear it out, but Beast of Hype gets their kill anyway. And now has such a big uh, uh, just pressure point. Having one held, these members of West Virginia are completely surrounded on site. And what angle do you look at? Where do you check? Where do you peek first? It's such a stressful situation, and they're being whittled down moment after moment. Not to mention the help from that recon dart to get the wall bang out of almost. And while they had some momentum, it's going to be halted at this moment. And it really comes down to Beast 2 Hype being that pressure, being that added player to deny their security. Yeah, we saw in some rounds previously that Beast 2 Hype just gets fallen and gets their first blooded, things like that, because they just had a battery on a situation unlucky however this time around makes a play that does succeed and like we talked about looks kind of bad if it doesn't work but looks great when it does work and when it did work for beast of just now had that huge hold on a main completely surrounding west virginia at this point and then yeah I, at that point as long as everybody plays clean there's no way that west virginia can actually succeed in that situation Rutgers stopping that momentum west virginia's been building trying to maintain the lead on this first half You talk about Beast of Hype as well, being that new player as well. He like having him on Omen, and that's exactly what we're seeing. It to, they are able to make these plays, and it looks like Rutgers is completely trusting to make these plays. And they're able to do it consistently. You find another frag over towards Pizza. West Virginia is 
awkward position where they just can't actually make their way onto the site as successfully as they were before and they're not fighting those initial picks Rutgers with the adaptation of their own looking out so beautifully now with the crosshair step in mid it's gonna be so hard for West Virginia to get through this pass and they don't really have tools to make it through. They don't have flashes to start this off. And now Sora is cut off. They have the dark cover. They want to go for the swing. But Beast who hype gets two. Massive kills there. It's all down at Sasa. And the familiar situation we saw from the first game, the first map of Haven. Uh, stuck in a really awkward spot in this dark cover. Pops out. Frutta with a nice reaction. Straight to the head. Perfect accuracy. Rutgers will at least guarantee a round lead going into uh, the next half, but obviously A4 will look a lot better. And Beast Hype, man, that's that player's like not up there on the scoreboard, but like just how these rounds have gone. If Beast Hype falls early, it's been hard for Rutgers to continue succeeding. With Beast Hype gets success early, it looks so heavily in favor for Rutgers. Now we're on the final round of the first half. Should be interesting. They have a bit of utility. J Chronic specifically on that Hunter's Fury. And if we're speaking specifically Beast 2 Hype, maybe they could just preserve themselves. I think that's the name of the game. Stay alive. Maybe be able to put yourself in a better position using that from the shadows. Regardless, you need to be there for your team. Not only just to keep those angles held, but to keep those dark covers being put into place. But regardless, we have Ivan. Link things down. They have a bit of Whoa. pressure and they walk through. They get hit with the Hunter's Fury. They don't care. And they remove Black Coffee. Still living fight another day. Sora finds the Fragment Beast High, but it's still a situation that Rutgers can stay alive in this round. Rotation's coming over from Freda. The chip damage from the Shock Bolts. Ivan still holding the pressure point over towards Street, but with a uh, Gort going down. We we'll have to deal with this dark cover situation, which is definitely awkward to have to deal with. But when dark cover goes away, confirm this door there. Nobody's in the side, uh, tree area. It's going to be a slow retake from Rutgers. Oh, door's gone. There it is. It has to be Ivan. They've got the Tour de Force, but they also have the Vandal in hand. It really doesn't matter. One bullet from anything will take them out of play. They send out another dark cover to block off door, but it doesn't matter. There goes Saucin and Jay Chronic. They continue it. The trifecta one for each as they defend it out. And they close out the first half with a victory. Nearly a tight game going in the second half is massive for West Virginia, considering this team composition point that we talked about earlier. Kind of just being down the uh, old narrative at this point. So we all know what we're talking about at that point. But Rutgers, at the very end there, couldn't quite close out a 3v3 retake situation because they're so spread out. Members are kind of challenging at different times. And honestly, credits to West Virginia being able to just find those fights in ways that they have a constant 2v1 or advantage situation to win out on. It was impressive from Ivan, though, to be able to get those frags the way they did with the Tour de Force. It just wasn't quite enough at the very end, but still a very impressive 15-7 start on this uh, map. Finished in that first half. Rutgers, we'll see if they can make a better play on this uh, map than they did on Haven on the offensive side. Well, this is going to be the true okay. test, as we were speaking before earlier. They... Definitely struggle with this composition in terms of their offensive play. The offensive capabilities aren't exactly there. But they've got a strong push coming out from Mark, but they're going to walk right onto the fragment. Ivan walks through. They get taken down by Agility. And they'll continue to hold their angles. No, Sora can't maintain that position. Beast, Beast to hype and almost get the job done. Beast to hype comes up again almost as well. Here, ready and fighting. They will have this plant. There for the spike. Dark cover is being set up. Nice one-way setup, actually. So it's going to be even harder to get on site now. It's one of the many reasons people love Omen on this map. Things like this. Black Coffee might be able to spot out almost. They do, but they can't capitalize on it. Maybe more can be done. No. Beast 2 hype is just too hype at the moment. They're stacked up in the same location. I don't think they'll be expecting Beast to be in that same spot. There's not much time really to work with. End. Yeah, there's not much time. At this moment, you gotta move. Almost. Oh, oh, there's a shot onto almost. But does it even matter? At the end, no, it doesn't seem <laughs> so. They wanna go for the exit frag. But Beast 2 Wipe is good for four. What a round for the young player, Beast 2 Hype. 
had some unlucky rounds in the first half, but had, definitely had the ones that the reads came out on top and even starting the second half might be that player that you have to look at because there's no duelist to work with. So you're definitely going to be looking at an omen naturally to use those dark covers, try to step those kinds of things to be the one to create space for your team and to make plays happen. It's going to be a little bit of a slower process, but it's one that can still work for Rutgers and winning the pistol round is so massive for them as well. Get this anti-eco underway. Should they win this one out, they can move forward with quite a round lead that they can actually make the magic happen on this offensive side of things great job by almost to, be, to work together to find a 2v1 situation to be able to make the numbers be in their favor okay this is gonna be a standard take i'll try and run through b main and almost and ivan they're just tearing apart the defenses even through the walls it doesn't even matter they don't see anybody but they won't see anyone because they're gonna fall before they can even try for a retake yeah smg beats classic almost every day of the week all down to just black copy with a shorty trying to make something cheeky happen to do some eco damage at the very least but beast hype shuts them down just keeping the frenzy from that first round not even buying up there because they'll be able to buy up now with a rifle to try to keep this momentum going for the team will they even buy a rifle they might just save and just go full by next round too maybe i mean <laughs> beast is just holding on to that frenzy i mean they've done so much work so far and why buy one when you could just steal one from your opponents? And yeah. I'm thinking that's what that that might be the case here, Chad. Now, honestly, like uh, Frenzy is pretty solid in the meta right now. And also, if you want to, you can save money so you can buy an operator for perhaps your chamber play or something like that next round. So you can try to work slower picks for the op kind of situation. Statistically, you lose this round anyway, so just playing for the future could be the case. Okay, from the shadows there just to gain some information, but the only info gained is that sight is pretty deadly, especially when you got Jay Chronic there. Sora, good for one before they fall, and Jay Chronic still in play. They have to fight too, just to preserve their life, and maybe they'll be good for it. The sprays almost is good on the tracking, but what else they can they do to survive? They have a vandal in hand, but they got to take down more, and they can't get it done. Yeah, and luckily had to run so far to get that vandal grabbed up. And by that time, West Virginia University members are swarming through. So I'll just see, does it buy the operators? They just wanted to go for the option of just having a really healthy economy instead, which is fair enough because operators are really tough to work with on offensive side of things anyway. And they can make that play happen with Ivan later on anyway, naturally because of the ultimate. So just see how things go with the art rifles instead. Uh, full rifle round. Looks like Phantom Gang for Rutgers, Vandal Squad for West Virginia. Which one are you, Los? Um, I like Phantom when I'm not getting my one taps on the Vandal. <laughs> oh, it's I a spray this day. Broken. This gun's broken, man. I gotta, I gotta use the real gun. It's yeah, the yep. <laughs> not crazy accurate, so we're gonna spray it down. Fair enough. Sometimes you gotta be that way. Yes, but sir. right now, a bit of uh, resistance in terms of utility, but when it comes to actual players, Frodo getting the job done. Removing one, that being Ivan. They have to back off. And this is not a bad start here. They've gained some serious map control and already a kill over on Sora. So slow things down, which is good because of what we talked about. Slower approach onto the sites. So you don't want to find a situation where West Virginia just reads that you're going to attack a site they get a pick on and just heavily over rotate and they're all just completely set up with crossfire spraying you down as you walk onto the site. So they just defaulted, cut noise. Force West Virginia have to respect the fact that a rotation can happen. Therefore, it keeps them spread apart. So when they do execute on a site from Wreckers, even though they have a little bit of a slower pace to it, they will still have the numbers advantage to work with and should therefore be able to take the site effectively. There's a dark cover. It's going to force Kwanzi there. Pop flash. No one's there to greet them. So you have such a far play. The back of sight on me and getting hit with that zero point. That'll be what they need to clean things up. The Chronic and Agility have no signs of resistance. They will have this plan in play, and it's a 2v5 for the retake. Almost almost got taken down there, but not quite enough. Still taking at 30 HP. Some chip damage going on the way. Taking more than 30 HP off of Black Coffee. But at this point, it's a 2 versus 5 against a heavily uh, defensive composition. We're not going to get in that sight. <laughs> Time's not working for us at all. They know exactly where we're coming from. Let's go for a save at this point, which is a good call by West Virginia in this situation, which also West Virginia, they kind of got checkpoint mated because of that force spread out in the defensive line situation. They're probably going to have a hard time with this uh, game if they aren't able to successfully find map uh, control, get some space themselves earlier on. 
Freda getting that first frag onto the chamber and into garage was massive for them because suddenly those trademarks are gone off the site of the map. So they have no more flank watch or any of that free control from mid, things like that. Uh, and also, they just instantly lose a lot of map control on top of it. So West Virginia can't lose that first blood, especially not it being the chamber. Yeah, so that's going to be a lesson for uh, Sora. As they're sorely going to learn it. They have to ah. stay back. They have to <laughs> play with the rest of the squad. <laughs> thank, thank you. Got thank it. you. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be here today. This is when the invitation was. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, that's that's a tough lesson to learn. But they have to play it. Sora will stay in the back line as they rightfully should. They've got a bit of a light buy, only a few. I mean, they do have rifles, but some of them come with the light armor. Yeah, working with what they got, try and make uh, some lemonade out of limes. The situation it's gonna be a little bit tough, but you can try to play it off if you do it right. Put enough sugar in there. J. Crack though, speaking of sugar, getting nice tags with that Hunter's Fury. Almost, I like that, realizing, you know what, they might have a, a bit of a safe situation going on here. Throws one weapon off the map, where a player down, they don't need that anymore. So nobody in West Virginia can grab that up. Yeah, smart response to a tough situation, and a few players tagged up. Now they should be a lot easier to deal with. It all depends on Sora in this moment. Jiggling a little bit. They're itchy. They're waiting for someone to come on through, and it's a good thing for them. They brought out that weapon. This is such a, a game of chicken right now. <laughs> and maybe Sora, if they peek, they aren't expecting four players to be around the corner. But here it comes. Oh, they're good for one. But do they realize that agility is here? Well, they find out too late because now there's just two left to try and take this site. Sora all alone, but tucked away from Bose. We'll be able to buy enough time. Just hang out, wait for the team to rotate through. But because of the pressure from Rutgers... Don't allow them the time to do so. But still going to be 3v2. It's still going to be advantage for West Virginia, especially with Sasa being on a good timing here, catching them out. Jay Cronk finding Beast to Hype. Quanzi fighting with their last breath to take down Sasa, but that's all they're going to be able to do is Black Coffee runs right through and finds the follow-up frag to trade it out and win out the round for West Virginia. I love that placement of both um, Agility and Sora. Having uh, Sora in that moment, looking down B main, there is the first point of contact. I don't think they expected another player sitting inside of B main, and it worked out perfectly. I mean, Agility did lose their life in the process, but it was enough to just cut them down before they could make it into the site proper, making that retake that much easier. All right. So record solution on offense for Haven. Let's stack up at A and take A. We're about to find out if that will work on Ascent as well. Stack him in A. There's one way. Drop by Sasa and makes it so much harder to push themselves through. Black Coffee, though, because of that null command being forced right back. But the rotation is already happening for West Virginia. Can it get here in time? I think the, the main question relies on will they be spotted out by the Eldro? No. Kwanzi goes down. They want to shoot a bit more. They're trying to get the resurrection in. Agility finds too. Well, they have to get that medical procedure in place. It doesn't work out. And they all wiped the floor with them. That was that was not the uh, attempt they were hoping for that we saw back on Haven, Chad. My God. Los, I love hearing your New Yorker accent come out when you get excited about the action, man. I, I love to hear it. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> Just like West Virginia is, loves to see them having success with a gamble, like hard rotate, like, okay, no command. They're coming in. They're stampeding. We learned a lesson from Haven. They're trying to take A side at this point. Instant rotate and Black Coffee. Just making some like bait and switches, some like ins and outs behind generator. Sauce doing the same thing with Tree Word. Perfectly so, or though, he can't perfectly get the shot down mid. So has to give that up, but the trademark will still be there to work. For coverage. Now we got Ivan. Double guessing. Do they want to make the peek in? They have the old drone there. They can walk on through. It that will works. be protection. The real issue is what is going on in terms of tree? Who is going to be there to stop me? I mean, they have that trademark there. But any information? The, the shoulder, the elbow is spotted. Goodbye, Sora. Thanks for playing. <laughs> it's going to be a major loss, a major setback here for West Virginia with so much ground gain, but that is, again, it's four players in market. If they can lock that down, that'll be such a, a dastardly choke point to stop them from walking on through. But maybe they don't even want market. They want CT. 
Ooh, the nice crossfire from Agility and Sasta and be able to force them back, though, just in the nick of time. Like, that time it was almost perfect for Rutgers, but what is going perfectly for Rutgers is to take on B-Side itself, front of B-Side, finding the frags themselves, making it a four versus two situation for this post-plant. Black Coffee in such a long rotation, but, I mean, Agility is quite far themselves. This is going to be a wild one. Do you have at their disposal? Oh! What a one-two punch there. Black Coffee too concerned about the alarm bot that they aren't expecting Frota to have the ill swing. And they get the job done now, Agility. Potentially was contemplating using that null command. Well, you might want to save that for another day in the 1v4. Yeah, Frota gets the job done. Yeah, nobody will be there to revive you if you fall as well. So you're basically just guaranteeing you're losing a major element of your ultimate. Try using it by yourself. So smart to hold on to that. But Agility... Rutgers maintaining the lead. They have a Hunter's Fury and a Lockdown. And I really want to see them use the Lockdown this round because there's no Hunter's Fury from Jake Chronic to answer back on that. There's no other really other utility that West Virginia can really use unless there's like some crazy shock to our lineups that Jake Chronic just happens to have or whatever position that Frota puts that Lockdown on. But this would be an ideal round to use it for, especially towards that Cubby and A site is one of the more uh, common locations because it's so effective. Yeah, definitely much more pressure being put onto Sora because they got hit with that zero point. No option for them to run away with the rendezvous, and there it is. That's the lockdown. A lot more pressure being put in place. Sora still standing firm. Guess they'll jump out at the last moment. I want to see, are they going to go for a fake and rotate through mid, or are they going to use this to go towards tree? Because they have the Sova and Killjoy is still a main, so it's going to be an A hit most likely that we know. West Virginia wouldn't be able to know themselves. Had to fall off the site no matter what. The Null Command now is there for Agility. He'll be the entry onto the site because he can get revived later on, perhaps. Not seeing any presence from Rutgers, but the time is ticking. We see it coming. The execution is now. Oh, they close that door. And now they've got site control. But do they have heaven control? It doesn't seem to be the case. Agility, good for one. They reposition behind that just outside of the range of the no point, but it doesn't matter. They've got the Hunter's Fury as well. The support from the back line will be good to deal some serious damage. As Ivan is doing well on their own. Sostin reduces the numbers by one. Maybe Black Coffee could be good for some support. But in the end, it's still a 2v3. And the angles, plenty of them to clear. They have not a great idea of what is going on. Especially jumping out getting tagged with the Recon Dart. And especially once that dark cover falls. So will the rest of West Virginia as Rutgers is on map point. Oh man, Black Coffee, the victim of the most unlucky timing in the world. As soon as they jump out from heaven, Recon Bolt lands and tags them, and they're getting shot through smoke. They try and reposition, try and like create some space. As soon as they do, that's the dark cover drops, and they get sprayed down from multiple members in A main. Very unlucky there. Honestly, though, a great call out by Wreckers just using utility perfectly. They like, realize there's no Hunter's Fury to answer the lockdown. Let's we'll just get the site control for free. Let's push through trees so we have multiple angles to work with when we take the site from there. And then using the Hunter's Fury to push people off from trying to get back on the heaven and just force Austin back. And that really stalled out the West Virginia members enough to allow Wreckers to more optimally set up the post plant situation. Now, in this moment, there's everything to lose here for West Virginia. It's the map. We'll be heading over to Icebox. If they slip up one more time within the next four rounds. And Agility isn't taking any chances. They want to check out the surrounding area. Using that zero point. They back off. Find some shots going their way. Maybe they want to peek it. Maybe. It's a little dangerous. Yeah, zero point didn't get a lot of information either. Very defensively used. All I clear is that nobody made it past the gateway yet, but still has no idea what's going on in mid. Just answers back to some crossfire, like some, some spray downs basically, but that doesn't really give you a lot of information either at this point. West Virginia has to do so much guesswork. They're going to have to have such an amazing uh, usage of gunplay essentially to hold onto the site here as they have no real clue of where Rutgers is coming from. Oh, okay, wow, Shock Dart deals a lot of damage onto almost, but now Sostin goes in, tries to take advantage of the one way. They're only good for one. It's a one-way ticket for that one way. <laughs> Ayo. Thank you, thank you. Thank good wordplay, good wordplay. Anyways, play. Now, it's, now it's time for them to walk on through. They send in so much utility, denying space into market, but now they had that from the shadows. Agility! In the back agility! Agility with the 4K says, no, you shall not pass. 
You were not getting onto my site. What a play. What a hold from the staircase. Yeah, in situations like that, it does come down to just having insane gunplay, and that's what Jilly just did. They kind of did like a, a like a half check over towards Jilly's location. Didn't quite confirm that they were there until after re speaking like a double take, like, oh wait, there is somebody there, but it's too late. Jilly, too fast on the draw, too quick on the response, too agile with the gun in hand, able to find those frags and that 4K was massive, keeping West Virginia alive in this game, which if they lose, it's not in the world because best of three, they won the first map. But if they can bring it back in overtime and win out from there, they can just make it a quick 2-0 and stamp their ticket over to Atlanta. Quanzi, oh. I realized it was there. We know that. There's no chance to be taken by Black Coffee. They dash out immediately. They don't want to deal with the possibility of losing out on that duel and putting your team at such a great disadvantage. Yeah. Tough situation. Uh, you have so many rounds to make your claw your way back on. You can't really get away with taking many risks. This, if you get bad to read, you have rounds to work with. All good. Bad to read. We take a high risk, high reward play. But if you do a high risk, high reward play too often here, you're inev inevitably going to lose it out. That last round is going to work out for Rutgers. So you have to play as completely safe, smart Valorant. That's what Black Harvey is trying to do. Oh, and they're good for one agility there to help him out and provide support. Went really saucy from the heavens, able to rain down some fire. This is a blow for blow ping pong match. Bar for bar, word for word. They're trying to steal their flow, but Ivan, they back off. They go away. They go into tree. And another one of those opportunities for either of those players to secure the kill, but they run away instead. Ooh. They back off. A fake rotation to be put in the works by Ivan. I love that because they recognized that they were both going to be heaven on A. Once they ran out through mid cubby going over towards uh, the, the catwalk there, the distance naturally makes the sound cutoff happen to where rest of Virginia members don't know if he actually rotated B or A at sites. He's back, but Jay Chronic sitting here just in case, sticking together. Just needs to stop him from planting. What? <laughs> Gets the kill too. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was that was a real razzle dazzle. <laughs> that was brought in by Jay Chronic. <laughs> I like that. But this is just a crazy gunfight. Yeah, it was literally back to forth. Like whoever got the kill died next. Was basically what it looked like on the site. It was crazy. Like I'm gonna swing you, or I'm gonna swing you. I'm gonna swing you. I was like, I got to trades, trades, trades. Ten to uh, twelve. For the round count and i like what jay chronic and sword did there sticking together if the commitment to a site was there they'd be late they to it to you just Let's stall them out play. on the timer win by time if it is at b site we can work together make it 2v1 retake happen worked out for them there but what didn't work out for them is agility a player who's been performing so well in these last rounds that they have to stay alive in for west virginia falls immediately in this round to ivan on a save round for wreckers at that beastly back to just a frenzy in hand an ultimate used by ivan to make that kill happen right Take some ground on mid, but what do they want to do for their next play? They're backing off a bit, they sent out a trademark, and we definitely see that Ivan wants to maintain their posture looking into CT, but this Sorry. might be an issue because you've got Sawston potentially looking through market. They Safe might catch team. off player off guard. I guess the door must be closed. Otherwise, that would be free and clear sight lines. This is a bit of a rotation back to Ooh, B. I after like they that. I thought it was cleared. Sawson teleported back, but he's going to walk right through the sight line. He doesn't get killed from it. Now we have Sora dealing with Ivan in mid. Okay, well now maybe Jay Chronic, who's been able to put in so much value so far. There's one. Beast 2 Hype is out of the game. Maybe Quanzi able to stop them. They continue this fight. It's currently a 2 on 4. The 2 to 4 still in hand. Sora, they could push this. They could win this fight. It's huge. But it's all based on this timing at the moment. We don't really know what the play is. He goes in for the pre-fire, but it's not going to be enough. And now it is all up to Jay Chronic. We've seen them perform magic in the past. Maybe they can provide one final trick for us here in this critical moment. But no, we can see through this magician's tricks. It's 13 to 10. Rutgers are able to win it back and claw it on West Virginia's own map pick. Again, blow for blow, map for map. We're going to Icebox. We are going to Icebox almost at the very end. They're saying you almost made a comeback happen, but not today. Shutting down Jay Chronic, closing out the map. And it's just a situation that is very odd and happens very often at people who make the map pick. 
will lose their map pick. And that's what we saw so far in the series, both times, that exact thing happening. Going to Icebox, it'll be very interesting to see how these compositions go. Uh, interesting to see if they stick to, uh, on the side of Wrecker, stick to the no duelist composition. A map like Icebox, where a lot of lurks and things like that uh, are very effective, uh, getting on the site going past operator lines. If West Virginia University uses the chamber jet uh, composition as, oh, as well, gets operators set up, it's gonna be really hard for records to make themselves onto the sites. But we just showed that they could do it on maps like uh, Ascent. They had some success on Haven, but definitely Ascent, they can make it happen with the smoke play, information gathering, things like that, rotations. They might be able to pull it off on Icebox. I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly if they can. Yeah, we'll find out if they need to make adjustments or if this composition is working for them. It got them a map. It might be able to give them a second. And we'll find out as we head over to Icebox right after this break.
Welcome back to the CECC Mid-Atlantic Valorant Invitational. We're in the finals. We're in the final map as well. We had Haven. We had Ascent. Neither of the teams who picked their respective map won it out. And now we're going to the decider of Icebox. I'm Los, joined by Chad Atlantis. And Chad, how are we feeling after this recovery from Rutgers back on Ascent? I'm feeling really good because they proved like proof of concept basically our composition can really work i will say that scent is the map that i've seen a composition work the best though so they still have a little bit of proof to me going into icebox going up against a team like west virginia that's proved that they're really good at working some picks and making some map rotations happen especially thanks to Sauston, a player who is really good at moving around the map really quickly for the team makes big clutch moments happen as well so that's gonna be the big player that i'm looking at i mean like black coffee as well as sora being the opera players, jet chamber action, that kind of stuff in Icebox would be a big deal as well. But Sauson's the one I'm really looking at doing the one-way smoke setups, the rotations for the team, getting pressure from the team as well, especially that I'm going to assume to go ahead and continue playing Omen, which is still a really strong choice on Icebox. Yeah, and speaking of being strong and getting those initial picks, we got to talk about Ivan on the other side from Rutgers. They were able to bring out six first bloods in that previous map. That is a wild stat. They are always on the hunt, on the prowl, whether it's with the Headhunter, Mendel, or even the Tour de Force. They are deadly, and you don't want to take peeks against them initially. So this is going to be an interesting one. I'm excited to see it because we're about to head into Agent Select. Will they continue to run on that chamber? Will they adjust it? I don't see any change being necessary for this player and okay there it is oh. the lock the insta lock on for us game for Ivan. <laughs> there it is beside going over towards jet as well because this is a map that just like you find so much success with op wielders especially being jet and ice uh chamber because of the fact that it's just really long line of sight for blade b main a main as well has a lot of control from multiple advantage points that both chamber and jet can work with very well as well as from snowman for b-side coverage as well as mid control from a uh, boiler things like that so there's a whole lot of uh, strength in that so it makes sense that they'll put um the young player beast who did see like the player who kind of was like that pseudo duelist like pick even though they're on the omen last game on sky for the first game as well um also we saw a double controller setup omen and viper so gonna be a lot of of vision denial going to this map so my heart goes out to you cool scoots on the uh, observing goal here but good luck i believe in you oh yeah this is, this is gonna take a real toll on everyone's cpu watch it this one <laughs> <laughs> both teams have it man <laughs> both teams going double controller yeah, I'm excited to see Beast do hype on this one. Beast mm -hmm. certainly has proven to be like a very solid gunner with the great aim, having the ability to move around, having the ability to just get that aerial advantage. I want to see what they can do with the projectiles of that blade storm. Maybe they can find their mark. Maybe they have yeah. what it takes. Like this could be their X factor. This could be the moment where they really step above West Virginia. Trademarks being dropped in kitchen, something uh, very commonly seen these days. Sora finding the first blood of the final map of this tournament. Getting the kill onto Freda, so a lot of that Viper utility just gone now. It's going to make it so much harder for Rutgers to get onto the site in the first place, but also to lock it down in the post play situation. They're just hanging around beyond this dark cover. They are so careful. Beast 2 hype is gaining a lot of attention. I think if they find a pick, this will be just a, an alarm in the head of everyone from West Virginia to run. Wow, this timing. Back, but maybe not. Oh, there it is. With a shot out from screens, you got to know that this isn't going to be the place where they'll execute. But even so, Spike Carrier dead. Agility lying in wait. They've been such a sneaky player now on the Omen. Unless all alone, it's Ivan. Just one bullet on the head, Hunter. Maybe they can make something work, but they just cannot get it done. Wow, the timing worked out really well for Beast there to get that first frag, but it was also Black Coffee still sitting on the A site, so the timing also was, uh, it, it was the positive, it was the con that Beast got to experience in that round. Overall, West Virginia doing a fantastic job of just sitting around angles, holding trigger discipline, finding the right times to strike, and reading the rotation of Rutgers. And a lot of that was also thanks to that trademark in Kitchen. It was destroyed by Ivan. Instantly, the West Virginia members kind of had like that awareness of, you know what, they're probably going to play for B at this point. Let's at least rotate over and at least respect the fact that they have Kitchen control. And that worked out beautifully for them. 
My question is, how are they going to react in this second one? We only have just a continuation of this headhunter for Sora. I mean, that's all they really need, but agility, getting that aggressive play, moving through two, they remove two. They prune the branches here from Rutgers, and they've leave left only two left here. For oh my god, the yeah. Scarlet Knights, <laughs> what are you doing? They're bleeding all over. Clear the floor, you're covering it with blood, just pools everywhere at this point. Yeah, there's just members of West Virginia at that time being very aggressive, like multiple times, think, largely being agility, but also uh, Black Coffee along with allies going over towards uh, that pressure towards a main. That worked out beautifully for them. Also, something we didn't really mention that Sawson was on that Omen previously a lot, now going over to the Viper because they don't really have that second initiator. Agility was that flex player, now going over to controller instead. And uh, another player, just true the name, is very agile and moves across the map very quickly and should uh, play this open role just fine. So far, so good. But this is going to be the bonus run. How well would they be able to find success doing those kind of like quote-unquote ratty plays or aggressive plays on corners? Kind of hard to do that when people are watching like laser focus on sight lines with rifles in hand. Okay, Jilly sending out the paranoia, making players think twice as they walk down. Be long. Okay, be too hype there with a nice shot. Moves the yellow player. And there isn't anyone there to directly stop this offensive. You may have Sawston waiting in with that uh, that snake bite, hoping to stop a plant. But as we know, this isn't going to fully kill them. It might dissuade them a bit from getting that plant in. And it actually has denied them space to be taken. They're holding back. They have to kick in that uh, that yellow line of fire as they're hoping someone is going to show their face. Yeah, but those toxic screens... Uh... It's still going to be there. The snake bites were used preemptively, so that's going to be gone by now. They had plenty of time to work with for Rutgers. They were not going to be in any hurry to get on the site. Kwanzi finds a fragment of sauce on top of that, and this round is going all Rutgers' way. They have the time on their its side at this point. They had all advantages in the world. They're getting all the frags. Still flawless on the round so far. These two members of West Virginia have to play from longer angles with just a headhunter and I believe a specter in the hands of like uh, Jake Karanik. Not much time left to work with, to be honest, and maybe they could go out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> uh, they realize what the job is. They got to go out. They have to try their hardest, maybe take a few down with them. They don't want it to end in a flawless round. And those missed shots, they don't hit their mark. There isn't much for them to do. Maybe one can go down, but it's seeming to be a flawless. And that will be the case. There they go. Have that nice little look at each other before, and it's like a pleasure serving with you, brother. Let's go. And then into the fray they went. They didn't find any frags. Unfortunately for them, they couldn't get the kills to do any kind of damage to the economy of Rutgers, which actually would have been very valuable, considering there's like just nearly hitting that 3K price points for some of these members. But they know also on the side of West Virginia, we're not planning on really taking any of these weapons in the next round anyway. And it, all things considered, it actually kind of works out that they didn't die to Rutgers as well. Even though it take, still would have been better to get those kills, but still there's no old point going over to, for the kill credit for Rutgers members. They don't get the bonus 300 credits, things like that. So all in all, all good. The round ended up the way we expected it to at that point, and West Virginia will be able to buy up going around number four. All good indeed. As I stare out longingly from my window. Regardless... <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying the adjustability that they have. They, they're they so willing to change out who is holding what angle. Yeah. As we've had three different players take on the position of Kitchen. Now this is the first time that they might be looking down it. And Jay Chronic unable to defend it. They get a decent amount of damage onto Ivan, but it certainly isn't enough. But they have some potential pressure coming out from Orange. It's Black Coffee. They narrowly miss a shot going on to Kwanzi. But they will be able to finish the job regardless. Spike will go down on the opposite side of that toxic screen. And Fredo will continue the onslaught. And Ivan now just buying so much time. Just making it so hard for these members of West Virginia University. Making it onto the site safely and quickly. Teleport away. We'll be able to regroup with the team. It's going to be all on these hands of this Viper on site. Freda got some first frags. Snake bite might be able to reach, but it's going to be a swing through by Sawson for 3k on the round. A player coming up big for West Virginia, trying to get the momentum back in the side. But Ivan, utmost, the two members, chewing so strong of four Rutgers. Now in a two pieces once, all down to agility. Time's running low. They got to make the commitment. Oh, but the dark cover, it ran out. They were exposed, and it was a perfect timing for almost as they get the swing from yellow and save the day and narrowly get away. From that wow. explosion of the spike. 
Yo, I feel good to save that gun for sure. Economy should be fine for it. Agility twice now has gotten uh, found themselves completely left exposed from the dark cover timer uh, timer being running out. Their own dark cover as well. Um, so it's very interesting that that is the case. Maybe just not as familiar on Omen as they were with other agents they were playing. Uh, who knows? But it might just be uh, distractions in the moment too. Some comms could be going on. You miss time. What things happen? What was going on? I don't know. Either way, Wreckers finding a lot more success getting the play style going where they are counterplaying a lot of West Virginia's utilities. You saw that dark cover and kitchen getting rid of that trademark. You're seeing now Beast uh, to Hype countering the utility of a gun in hand of Black Coffee not being as strong as Beast to Hypes. And Beast oh, yeah. with the confidence finds the shots, finds the frag, finds access to A site. And they'll get this spike planted indeed, Ivan. Just outside of the range of that shot door, and they could escape. They have plenty of opportunity to shoot and play for that uh, those lineups. No need to hold on to the site proper, but almost is doing a good job of denying anyone who wants to get back in. Chronic, good for a response. Out with the marshal. Maybe they can find some more damage and do a bit more, but they are simply outgunned, out-equipped. And that is another round going the way of Rutgers University. They're taken away. That's three in a row for them. You can see they're having a lot more speed and confidence. Beast of Hype going aggressive and having that tailwind option, cloud burst, updrafts, things like that. Just something we didn't see them from them from those first two maps of the series because they didn't have that entry duelist. But now Beast, younger player, confident in their abilities, being willing to be pushing forward and creating that space for the team, creating some action. Ivan, obviously, we know is very successful at fighting first bloods as well. Very good on his entry and chamber being kind of an entry duelist, setting up those rendezvous for teleporting out in case they need to as well. So now with the Viper's Pit being dropped in a site. I want to see if Rutgers tries to use like a Hunter's Fury to push out Sostin, get some recon from the Aldrin as well. If this tag goes on Sostin, they're going to be doomed to a Hunter's Fury, I believe. But it doesn't quite find them. Oh, a nice little dance to get away from it. Oh, no. oh at the last second, it did! Oh! But none of them make a connection. No, okay. Oh! That is an unfortunate use of the Hunter's Fury. They might be able to eke out a nice kill onto Beast if they get away. No, Beast is actually the one who deals death. They huh. are not the prey. They are the hunter. Yeah, Beast uh, punishing Black Coffee for getting a lot more eager than maybe they should have been in that moment. Knows that there's multiple members of Rutgers here outside the pit, but pushes out anyway, trying to get even more advantage despite them successfully holding onto the pit's map control here. But now we're seeing Sora trying to do the same thing, trying to get some control over mid. Julie trying to just get some information over B main of what exactly is going on because West Virginia has to try to get some information. Like, what do, are they doing? Where do we go? Where do we hold the line? Definitely a bit of aggression. They want to look into the sight lines back in the spawn. And Kwanzi oh. just back over an A. There goes the Viper's Pit. There goes Sauston repositioned onto the rafters. Way in the back line, and I don't believe Jay Chronic will be expecting this, but they know exactly where agility is. And just a very quick reflex. They're able to move away, but in these final moments, they have to somehow get the spike planted. Only a few seconds remaining. If they realize it's in default, they might be able to stop it, but no, it will go unabated. And now it's just Sora left to deal with this 1v3 into the Viper's Pit. They could get the shot onto Kwanzi. However, that is not the case. A 3k for the Omen and a fourth round for Rutgers. Kwanzi absolutely stepping up for Rutgers in that round. Finding the frag onto Sassen. Later onto Jilly when Jilly was trying to punish the plant from Freda. Jilly, if, if he could get to that point where he can get the kill on Freda, then West Virginia would have won purely by time, but Kwanzi gets a frag onto Sassen, gets the team access to A-Site. Gets a frag onto Agility, allows to get the plant in time, and at the very end there, gets the frag onto Sora Chorus, close out the round, things like that. So Kwanzi, MVP moment from this player that has a lot of shining moments, especially from Haven, uh, but during the set was a little bit quieter because the rest of the team were stepping up, but when the team needs him, he steps up for them for sure. And that breaks the economy of West Virginia, so if there isn't much for agility to work with. They will jump back over to yellow, might be able to take a close range skirmish, and they get the job done. There's Beast, they lose out. Ivan there for that recompense, and they'll get the kill. However, Spike's already in play. J Chronic looking for some more with the Hunter's Fury, but they'll find absolutely nothing with all those shots. A lot of ultimates pop, Blade Storm, Force as well. It's gonna be hard to get onto the site. 
The reposition option available as well for Kwanzi if they need to, just to create some distraction. Player Noir is making things even tougher as well. And the Viper is still alive as Frutta, as well as Ivan on the rotation, finding some more frags for the team and making it even tougher than already was for West Virginia. It's all done a black coffee with just a couple knives in hand. Can't find anything. This right click should be enough. There it is. 4K for Ivan on the round. Wow, another singular player step up here from Rutgers, where previously we had Guanzi. This time it was Ivan. Both of these players really showing that there's individual skill coming out from everyone here on the Scarlet Knights. And it's, it's a great thing to see as we have a big, big resurgence from Rutgers. Yeah, after the way that first map looked on Haven, you think, like, okay, maybe West Virginia just goes once away with it. Rutgers doesn't know how to play this composition. Then Rutgers proved they know how to play that composition on the second map. And now going into a little bit more of a meta situation, they look even stronger than before. Because you wonder, why were they even doing that in the past when this is looking so good for them? But Kwanzi gets shut down by Jay Chronic. You have to keep in mind that these members of West Virginia University, they're in the grand finals for a reason. People like Agility playing a frag as well on good timings and good reads on rotations. That slows things down. Ivan has taken a lot of space. They made their way into Kitchen and actually we dropped a, a trademark over there. So oh. interesting they'll get some information. Yeah, the gadget does get some info, but what does that net them in the long run? Because Agility has their number over by the tube and this is falling apart. Front is the last one alive and the 1v4 might be good for this kill onto Sostin and I think they won't be, especially after switching to that classic. It seemed that they were doomed and now we have West Virginia back in the game after such a drought of rounds. You know, what came successful for them is what we saw in the first two rounds was them pushing forward and getting success off of very eager peaks, uh, basically just pushing forward in ways that Rutgers would not expect them to be that far up. It worked on Pistol Round, it worked out in their anti-eco, but we, they didn't find success with it since then. They kind of went back to a default for a few rounds, it wasn't working for, for them, so they tried going a little more ambitious on positionings again, and it paid off. So Jilly kind of doing that yet again, and we'll see if that continues working out for this team. Jumping forward, but Beast is here, ready for the spray, that'll be good! This member of Jilly, that's the smoke's gone. Forcing these members of West Virginia University back to Snowman, but all of this toxic screen, dark covers, West Virginia has no idea what is even happening on the site right now. Yeah, it's absolute chaos, absolute madness, and tons of confusion to boot. But maybe in this moment, they won't make the commitment because there is a bit of pressure coming out. Now, Chronic sends out the Owl drone. This gives a great deal of information, but here's the dark cover denying the upper platform on the site. You have so many players stacked right around the corner, right from the default plant. And that makes it a bit easier. Black Coffee no longer there for the easy escape. If they want to make a poke, a prod, a peek out. And now there is no longer any possible information to be gained. All the tools are gone. Everything relies on strictly gunplay. I love that toxic screen as well. It's crazy like a one way over towards the new default. But Sostin trying to make an answer back. But Frodo's the one alive. Couldn't clutch out the last round. But definitely holding the ground for the team this time around. These members of Rutgers, man. It was Quanzi multiple rounds ago. And then it was Ivan. And now it's Beast and Frodo stepping up for the team. When all the members of a team can step up and shine, that makes it such a dominant force. And that's exactly why we're seeing them at, up at 6-3 to three on the score line. And they have plenty of tools to work with. Look at all the money in their bank right now. And even Ivan, Beast, they both have some eco round fallbacks. They could just buy somebody else if they're running low on money. Bring out the Tour de Force, bring out the Blades. But they don't need to because they're having so much success on their regular takes. I mean, Black Coffee, someone we saw come through big multiple times. They're at the bottom of the scoreboard. They're only running with the Sheriff. They're having a slow start here on Icebox. But now we have another Viper's Bit put into play. Black Coffee, player we were just talking about, is the first one to fall again. Sauce so having to force themselves back away from the pits. Finding some frags though with Jay Chronic being big for a three up over towards the rafters on the heaven position. Has to deal with Frutta, who was able to get the frag, but Sora answering right back instantly, all down to almost 1v3. Could this be a case of almost making the clutch happen? It is. Sauce and shutting them down. Can't find success through the Viper's Pit this time around. Hold on, can, can we get a replay on Jay Chronic just running into sight like that? <laughs> that was that was the most insane thing ever. Yeah, I got I gotta see this again. <laughs> <laughs> 
He hits him with the drive-by. Oh my god. Love it. Wow. Hey man, you <laughs> gotta get out of there. You might as well take some shots while you're running away because it doesn't stop your movement speed. So, I mean, why not? And if you get lucky, sweet. We'll take those. Not to mention, that was uh, that was sandwiched by a 3k. Play. They had to take complete control of that site. Good news for them. They'll be able to hold it down. But it won't be so easy for them this time around. I'll have that utility to work with. Almost does get some information, but Black Coffee dashes away. They have the safety, but Sawston causing a lot of damage. And even so, on top of this, Hunter's Fury is putting a ton of pressure on the runners. Yeah, Rutgers, they take a blow, but they answer right back instantly. Have a player advantage on the side. They're going to be able to get the spike planted in just a moment because most of Virginia members aren't quite close enough. Paranoid comes in. The Viper's Pit will be able to stall things out. Unless Sora goes aggressive, but can't get, get the kill. You can't get it. And they wanted to try and pull off that running gun. Similar to Jake Gronick, they can't pull off that same style. Now the man himself in one of the two positions has been able to win this out. Agility, only a whisper away. What? What? <laughs> a, a blind spray through the smoke. They turn into a 1v2. But even so, they activate that from the shadows to get a bit more information. There is a player who's hanging out by screens. That bait, it forces out the snake bite. But in the end, they won't be able to win it out. They make it much more expensive, though. Three kills before they'll fall themselves. As Ivan gets the job done, they finish it off with the tour de force and walk out with a rifle to boot. I made it expensive, but because of how successful workers has been on this attack, Especially a lot of the rounds that they win have been very healthy round wins as well. Their economy should be fine. Agility though, like, man, if Agility had more time to work with, if Agility had another, like, 15 seconds to work with, I think they might have been able to make that happen against Ivan. Like, that was insane. Very impressive effort from Agility. Good hustle, good attempt, but nevertheless, they weren't able to make it out on top at the very end. Rutgers confirming a lead for this half a very successful offensive side of things. And two members of West Virginia trying to stall their approach and Agility being the one first contact, but Beast shuts them down immediately. And Kwanzi here for some information in the back line, but it's not even about it. committed. Now they just have some straight positional advantage and yeah, they get away with it. Goodbye, Sawston, Black Coffee there to pick up the trade. But in the end, it doesn't even matter because Jay Chronic there to put in so much damage with the 3k. And now that's a good finish to the first half. 7 to 5. West Virginia back in this game for sure. Yeah, not too bad of a finish there. Uh definitely was looking kind of hairy once it got to like this 5 2 6 3 kind of situation, but bring it back to 7 5. It's competitive. It's nearly a tied up game. One round away from that happening basically, but man, Kwanzi committing to that from the shadows was a uh, pretty hyphy Found a fragment, but didn't expect Black Coffee to be there so soon. Meanwhile, Jay Chronic holding the line that we've seen him do so many times. This is the replay for it. Quasi expected that rotation, gets that first frag, but then didn't think Black Coffee would quite be there in that timing either. Instant rotation. Jay Chronic finds Ivan wandering through their own toxic screen, mind you, uh, but couldn't just quite work it out just right. And now we get a chance to see what West Virginia is packing here on the offense. The Chronic sends out that Owl Drone finds the scout. Beast to hype. I think they actually evaded that dart. They'll be able to keep their position unknown. Nice shot onto agility. Now they have to walk through that toxic screen. A lot of damage being taken, but Black Coffee there to deal some of their own. As this is just a blow for blow matchup still. They have a one player down. Make it two. Almost wants to press the advantage. Jay Chronic, the last one alive. Just a classic to their name, but they'll try and run away and fight for a better angle. That won't be the case. They're hunted down. Frota finishes it off. Rooker's winning a pistol round. We saw that on Ascents, and we saw them close it out from there on once they had the lead. So this feels like it might be a similar story, but... Still early in this half, so we'll have to see as the time comes. No force up from West Virginia. They had a hard time getting on site right there. It's really just Beast of Hype and other members of Rutgers just holding the line. West Virginia couldn't make their way in. A little bit of a, a, a clumsy take. They couldn't quite uh, create space and force off members of Rutgers very effectively. But these are the low uh, utility rounds overall, though, so we'll see how things move out uh, moving forward. Hunters not quite able to find the frags. B-side, though, able to do exactly that for main main. Marshall is basically like that uh,
budget operator for rounds like this anti ecos and that's where we see success coming from so far. Oh, this is going to be a brutal finish. Agility. They've been spotted. <laughs> Look at all the bullets flying their way. Oof. A firing range. The firing squad execution. And it's a flawless to hear for Rutgers. It's what we expected, but maybe you would hope for West Virginia to maybe get a bit more blood on their hands that time around. No guns removed, but they have guns in hand. Here on the next round. I forgot what number it is. I'm going to say it's the 15th. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think I got it. Yep. Quick maths. <laughs> I... Easy math. <laughs> Five plus never nine do, plus one. Never do math live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you can do live is challenge two members of Rutgers and get the frags anyway. That's what Black Coffee just did on the buy up round. Unlucky reload timing though. A great position for Fred, but can't connect to the second kill. That would have been massive for Rutgers, but instead that forces almost into a position of having a fight through four members of West Virginia. And two at the time can't find the same success Black Coffee did because the Spectre at long range is just not going to do it. West Virginia with a very fast round win answer back, shutting down the bonus of Rutgers. And we'll see the replays of how fast that went because these replays could basically be the entire round and we see it happen within a few seconds. Oh, yeah. Black Coffee made quick work of that opening frag and sauced in there to keep things kosher. And they only lose one, so not bad. And they have enough orbs where they can just feed one more back into Black Coffee. They can just run with the Blade Storm if they yeah. choose to. But, hey, not the ch not the case. They'll just have some light armor and keep full rifles for the entire squad. Forward posture now from Ivan, as well as Kwanzi. Agility is aware of it, though. Shuts him down. And something to keep in mind that last round, all the members of West Virginia University, despite having four live, all of them were in the red for HP. Like, they were weak at the end of that round. So, if Rutgers had better weaponry, they actually probably would have gone the other way, a grand scheme of things. But, at least for the start off this next round, it's going the way of West Virginia. Forward posture from Rutgers, trying to keep mid-control aggressively, it's hiding out in the dark cover. We'll go away in a few seconds here, but the rotation's already there for West Virginia, who are completely spread off in this map. Looking to see if they can just spread out the defensive line, find maybe another pick to work with, and then explode on a site. Who knows? I mean, they have a nice spot of Sora. Anyone wants to look back toward pipes, aggressive on the side of Rutgers, but there's no need for that. They've already lost out on one player, and they're all kind of sticking close together at this point in that wide line across the back line of CT. But with this slow play that we're seeing from West Virginia, it's making them rethink themselves. And that's the beauty of having a slow play. You make your opponents consistently guess or second guess where their position should be. But now this should be a clear indicator. The play has headed over to A, but B still hype. Great shot on the op over from screens. And they're going to try and get some more blind fire plays in play. That won't be the case. Kwanzi, next up, J Chronic. And that'll make it a bit more difficult, but it's still a 3v3. They can back off and play for the post plant. Agility with the shout and shroud and step. It doesn't put them away. They would hope to be, but regardless, the pinch is in. One versus two for Beast of Hype. Has a rifle in hand now. Can make this happen, but it has to figure out where these members are. But saw it on the high ground. I don't think Beast of Hype's aware of it. No. Oh, no. Certainly not. And they're able to defend that one successfully. The op investment is ruined. But they still have a bit of money. Piece of Hype can bring in that Blade Storm. Regardless, yeah, this was a, a, a tough forward positioning out from Ivan. And losing out on that one, it's uh, a lot of heavy losses taken by uh, Rutgers there. Yeah, it's a tough forward position from Ivan. But it's definitely a tough uh, execution from Agility. Who Dark cover was sent out, but it was a little bit late. When the member of their uh, West Virginia pushed out towards default, it got caught by Beast Hype before the start cover came through. Uh, beyond that as well, just couldn't quite get the timing to assist the people who were up the top nest. Rotate out was the shot step misplaced. Also, Sassen getting the first frag. Can't quite get the kill on Agilia's Beast to Hype. But Trey's underway. Things going both ways in favor of Rutgers at the very end. And now that spike is planted. West Virginia is in full effect. Some upgrades. All depends on this post plant. I mean, we've got black coffee all the way in the back. I guess they're expecting a much further rotation. Maybe someone from A, but that's not the case. Probably going to go through mid. Yeah, the two will be that choice avenue. Them to work it out. All depends on 
think the most important position is Jay Chronic. Because even if they go down, I mean, Black Coffee, they don't have a good angle on the spike. And now especially they don't, considering we've got the Viper's Pit full on denial against Black Coffee. They have to dash on. Oh, oh, maybe, maybe they'll be expecting that nice spray through the smoke, but it can't be done. The thrifty return from Rutgers committing that Viper's Pit. They'll be able to stop this Woo. plant. Deny Black Coffee from being able to stop the uh, defusal and win it back. I think a thrifty, honestly, just getting the trades alone made that a good eco round for Rutgers. But the fact that they were able to get those kills, force those members of West Virginia to commit to the site, allow those three live members of Rutgers to get the upgrades into rifles and then make a retake happen when they have a Viper's Pit as well. Yeah, sure, you know what? We have numbers advantage, but at this point, Let's go ahead and commit this Viper's Pit because we can win an eco round, which would be massive for us, and then that they did. Now at double digits on the rounds for the final map of this tournament. Whichever team wins this, wins it all. Oh, and that's a big win for Ivan, but in response, there go three for Rutgers, and this should be an open site. You've only got one more hurdle to jump. Maybe they can get it done because it's only Kwanzi in the back line, and a lot of blades hit them. However, Agility, Black Coffee, Sheesh. they finish it off. They were mad for losing that previous thrifty round. Yeah, they took that personally. <laughs> those members of Rutgers all were there on a side, but they just kept getting rolled through. Though, to be fair, though, those members of Rutgers were challenging in like one or two at a time, while all of West Virginia was a unit just death balled onto the side, just swarming through. So it's just a firepower uh, tr issue at the very end of the day at that point. And with that, with the confidence as well, and a pacing that Rutgers hasn't been used to out of West Virginia so far, because West Virginia has been very slow overall. That was incredibly aggressive and definitely seemed to catch Rutgers off guard. Now, what's the play this time around? Sora has that tour de force, and they're following up on the recon owl. And maybe it'll be a, a much quicker play. Ivan playing it close. They got the headhunter. They don't want the smoke at this point, and they're willing to rendezvous their way out of here. If that gets destroyed. No follow up, and oh, the attempted flank completely denied. Oh yeah, there's Ivan. They got their one. They got their man, and they tried oh. to rendezvous away. But that second position, the second location, is not good enough. West Virginia back at it. They win the Antico. Feels bad that you can see like the slivers of the body around the corner, but can't quite get the shot off. <laughs> it feels bad. But yeah, Rutgers was forced into a Nico round because how the last rounds played out. So they weren't able to make the same magic happen twice. They say lightning doesn't strike twice. Sometimes it does, but not today. Not today. The Hunter Sphere is available for Rutgers. We've had success with that in the past from almost. They do have a full buy up as well as that tour de force from Ivan, who very clearly has had success with that in the past as well. Will West Virginia, though, continue with this very aggressive gameplay? Because once they switched up to this minute adjustment, they've been successful two rounds in a row. Very heavily successful at that. Pushed up already. It's still going to be fairly fast-paced from West Virginia. Yeah, they're running on quite quickly. The only thing that they have to work with is Frodo with... Those snake fights, but it doesn't even matter because now they've got a Viper's been play. They can just take control of this space, and maybe a saving grace is going to be that Hunter's Fury, but it doesn't find any shots almost open to save the day, but it doesn't matter because it's Frutta who will be the superstar in this scenario. Just Sausted and just Sora hoping to survive it out. They're taking so many bullets through the crossfire, through the sprays, and maybe they can send some back themselves as Sausted, last one alive. No longer in play. Almost will get the defusal, but Beast to Hype is the one you want to thank along with Frutta for saving that one. I love fast gameplay, low, so I'm really glad both these teams are willing to make it happen right now. The answer from West Virginia goes faster. Answer from Rutgers. They're going faster. Let's also go faster. But they're all working as a unit as well, not straggling in one at a time that we've seen in the past. Further though, making definitely a hero play, getting two massive frags with a nice read. Somebody we tucked away the way that we, they were. No rats in my closet today. Rutgers keeping the round lead up 11 to 9. And now with no ultimates on the board for West Virginia University, I don't know how they're going to continue finding success doing what they did because they got into the site successfully, but they didn't find frags before getting onto the site, really. Uh, so once they got there, they dropped that Viper's Pit, but Rutgers had plenty of answers to snap right back with. 
now a bit more slowly as there aren't many options to work with especially when you're so close away for losing this whole series just two more rounds is all Rutgers needs to take this one home and take a nice trip to Atlanta that's not what West Virginia wants they want to take the trip they want to be the ones who could hold up the trophy who could hold up that ticket at the gateway center but Ivan it's a punches a hole through Sora's chest and denies any possibility and they could walk over to A. Man, Ivan's been so good at getting those first bloods for this team. It's just been a rock that Rutgers has been able to rely on so heavily this entire series, especially the later the series goes. It seems like this player just keeps stepping up more and more. And there's a good response. Agility. And make it one for one. And they can take even more space. Denying those dark covers to be put into place. And we're by Kwanzi. That's going to be a difficult maneuver. Now the dark, double dark cover. But it is denied. They have that poison orb and the toxic screen just to dissuade them. Not to mention the snake bites. And they've only got 20 seconds left to finish off or at least get the plant in play. The time's running real low right now. The sun's going really low down, big guy. Big guy, though, is agility. Getting a massive 2k on response. There's only two members of Rutgers left alive. They're low on util. They're low on HP for Freda. Oh my god, this is going to be such a tough retake take to happen. And the operator hands are Ivan. I gotta say at this point, you're 1v3. Let's go save the operator. Yeah, you don't want to give Agility the ace at this point. Oh. You don't want to <laughs> hand it over. I mean, you can tell that Agility, they want it, but they'd rather take the round. And that's that's the right move. But they will go hunting just a little bit, running through kitchen. Oh, they might spot him if they continue this hunt, because you have to deny. Ooh, oh, solid. player spotted, but they are going to run away. Chick Chronic, though, right around the corner, and there it is. No op to be saved, no weapon to cross over into the next round. West Virginia, only one round differential from them tying things up. That's actually so massive because having an operator in hand has been so good, especially for Ivan on this matchup. So taking that off the board, they can't buy it up. So they're going to a timeout talking about what do we do because we're losing ground. They're starting to make a comeback happen. You can kind of feel it. You can sense it in the air, the energy of West Virginia is starting to make that comeback happen. They were down by two rounds, seven and five and a half. They were down by one round. So that, that comeback isn't been like insane, but like you can feel these past few rounds, especially momentum has definitely gone in favor of West Virginia. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, this is this is their surge moment. As we've seen Rutgers being able to take round after round after round. And if you look at the timeline, they have had longer streaks. It has been uh, West Virginia that's just starting to get their way back into this fight as they are behind. I mean, we have seen a complete turnaround from these squads, at least if we're talking about Rutgers, from what we saw on Haven. That was a 13-4 finish. We are at another neck and neck matchup another neck and neck map and this is so close to the wire we might even see overtime yeah and honestly man situations like this where like if you got stomped it's like oh good gg it's like we just kind of got crushed they win move on but like if you're on grand finals you're trying to get access to that big land land all these collegiate teams are talking about how cool it's going to be to go there it goes into the wire like this on the final map and you're so close and lose it out oh that's going to sting so neither of these teams uh you don't want that to happen to either of these teams because they've been playing so well. Meanwhile, if you win it out, you're like, yes, we're able to squeak it out, especially if you're a player like Ivan, still finding first blood so consistently for Rutgers. And now they've got that forward position, specifically Beast 2 Hype, in that Viper's Pit. And this is still under consideration that West Virginia, they want to take this site. They want to take this fight. Oh, and maybe the Shrouded Step could provide a bit of a tricky scenario. But Agility doesn't have much place to move after this. What's what's their next move? Where do they go after this? Because no one is budging. Certainly not. Wait a minute. Freda walks out. Freda has left the zone. They do have a connecting Poison Orb, so they can walk right back in. So what is yeah. the plan right now for Agility? I uh, just kind of hear as a... Just... Punishing anybody who would rotate over towards B side essentially if they can hold the ground here. Also, they're waiting for Recon Bolt to come back as well. Oh! From the shadows for some info. Oh! The timing! That was insane. Wow. Wow. I, I don't even know. That's un unlucky. F. Ouch. Oof. 
that's that's those are all the noises that went in my head after seeing that they wanted to take that teleport over onto b completely denied no access to it and now they have to take it the old-fashioned way through blood and grit and aggression but mainly because of saucy pulling up with the 3k it's leaving frodo all alone in this 1v2 one and done another one for black coffee 11 to 11 west virginia is back in it back for the climb and both of these squads are going in only one more round until they hit map and series point. Yeah, this time it was going for the front of the shadows, but that's the exact moment that almost just narrowly got into the position to see that line of sight. Finally, the time couldn't have worked any better for Rutgers, but it was a hero play from Sauce and holding down that mid cross that Rutgers was trying to use. They were all weak from that poison cloud. The decay didn't come back fast enough and just... Some nice body shots, headshots as well, of course, will do the job. Now tied up for West Virginia. This B main hit has worked out so effectively for them for getting to the site. But the post plant has been a couple times that Rutgers have been able to hold themselves on the line and bring it back. Is that dead? Oh. Ivan again, dude. Ivan, that's, that's who gets it done. And they're almost out in the second gunfight. But the rendezvous is there to save themselves, save the skin. And they walk away. Free and clear. Not much ground game. They have gotten to yellow. What else do they need? There isn't a toxic screen there to provide the cover that they're hoping for. I mean, it is in play. And it isn't right used up. So this is just a slow one. I guess they're waiting for it to recharge. Yeah, they got 50 seconds on the clock, but 15 for the Recon Bolt, the Hunter's Fury. Clear out Snowman. If nobody's Snowman, you can use Hunter's Fury for like the kitchen. The Basically, a lot of positions you see Rutgers. That's exactly what they're going to do. No man's clear, clearing back sight, and make sure nobody swings late. Meanwhile, the teammates are going to be trying to get the spike planted, but these members of Rutgers answer so fast, it's the speed pulling the trigger that's working out for them so well. Rutgers, their response to the aggressive gameplay for West Virginia rounds ago was to just go faster on their retake and answer and clapping right back, and that's exactly what's working out now. Bring them into match series tournament point for Rutgers University. And that was a great teleport out from Kwanzi. They jumped into the Kelby on B, B long, and they were able to get the flank. Nobody was looking on their flank. If they have those trademarks put into play at the front of B lobby, then they wouldn't be expecting to look back that way. But when you have that teleport, that from the shadows, you don't have to trip it. You already get in that position and allow Kwanzi to pick up two. Man. So many players, both these teams are stepping up, down on the wire right now. It's Black Coffee trying to make some action happen. Forcing back Kwanzi though, but dropping down some dark cover. Making it not as easy for the Owl Drone. A fully clear information for the teams. Black Coffee might go for aggressive throw onto this black cover, or dark cover, but decides to go ahead and just wait out a little bit instead. Smart play. That will only last for about 15 seconds anyway. Now this is a moment where... Whoever dies first, it, it's going to dictate the swing of this round. I've been hidden behind two different smoke lines, and they'll have that Viper's Pit, and the double shock dart is put into place, but they back off. They don't want to fall prey to oh, oh my god, Ivan going for a hero play trying to stop the plant. They lose their life, but Beast 2 Hype is there to pick up the pieces afterwards. Frodo on the sideline, hoping Big to kill. have some more impact. But maybe agility on this off angle. Watch it all go down, but no one is walking, simply walking on through in their crossfire. Chronic, good for one. Maybe Agility can save the day. There's two potentially in their sights. They've gotten one, and they only need to take down another to turn this into overtime, but almost, oh. almost gets it done. A 1v1 to finish it off. Can they save this out? It's only one more player. It's just Sora. Sora saves it. They win it out in the 1v1. They clutch it and bring it to OT. Oh, my word. I honestly, the amount of times that Ivan gets the first blood successfully, even though that was a wild play that he went for, I thought, you know what? He might get it. <laughs> and that might be what his thought process was, too. Like, I'm just getting every first blood. Maybe I'll just throw myself into the Viper's Pit and still get uh, the kill anyway. Drops right in there. Almost has that right click on point. Does get some damage off, but it wasn't quite enough. Also, Agility on fantastic positioning, but it was almost who almost closed out the map. 
Man, if you have a name like that and you almost close out the map and y'all actually lose in overtime, you're going to be hearing it from all your friends and enemies. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a curse now. It's, yeah. a, it's a blessing and a curse. Let's see if they can bless West Virginia agility. In this unknown position, I don't think they've been known to hold it before. That has been a spot where I believe Sora has been caught out previously. Oh, there's the dart. They got to leave. Position revealed. Time to go. Yeah, at least has one way options though, so we'll fall back. Ivan though had a lot of success going through kitchen beforehand, especially against Jay Chronic. In this exact same scenario on that first half, Freda finding first frag as well over towards Sora. So as B main opened up just a little bit, but Jilly's still trying to hold the line. But still, they're gonna have to deal with this trademark from the side of Wreckers getting into the kitchen. That might be popped by Ivan as execute happens on B site because amidst the chaos, the members of West Virginia might not recognize. Actually, no. I mean, if Sora went down, that trademark is inactive. What am I talking about? I'm losing my mind right now, Laws. It's so late in the game. It, it really, it really is. <laughs> we got Kwanzi jumping up through the smoke. Edge shot. Goodbye, agility. And now, hello. The post plant set up. We'll be able to survive or maybe not. There's the shock darts dissuading that possibility. Now that they wasted that utility, only shaved off what? A few more seconds for the reposition. Black Coffee does a fake check. And you always got to check those for real. And that will cost them. How can you do that in such a critical moment in OT, in map three, in the grand finals? But now we've got Sawston. Potentially, they can bring it back. They've gone huge before. They could do it again. It's a 1v4, though. You know, narrowly avoiding. <laughs> That's awkward. Caught out. Just a little, bit of, a little bit of ducking. But even so, there it is. Ivan. Closing it out. They only need one more round for Rutgers to go to Atlanta. Man. All right, we'll have to see if Ivan can make the first picks happen again on top of everything else in the past. Kwanzi getting first frags over there. Ivan doing the same on Kitchen. Nice little rat position that was being invested into for so heavily so early on in that round. We're going to the situation, though, of uh, both teams had 7-5 defensive halves. No, offensive half. Both teams had 75 offensive halves. So it's so narrow that, like, there's not even that storyline of, like, oh, it's so heavily defensive or offensive favor, which team could win on the other side of things. It's literally, like, which team could actually figure things out the best overall. Okay, well, maybe B2 Hype is figuring out the perfect aggression. They've got that pick on the Sostin, and there goes half of your smokes. What yeah. are they to do? They're completely split up now. Sasa's been such a big part, member of uh, West Virginia as well with not only just the Viper utility, but also just positioning, getting those, uh, uh, punishing the rotations of uh, Rutgers as well. So that's going to make this take so hard as well as that presence on that flank position. This time they do angle themselves. Looking over to A. There's three players over by screens and boiler. They're ready for whatever may happen. Specifically, we got to talk about, I believe it's Sora. Saying, no, Ivan, into, they're ready to adjust. They're ready to make a move. And as long as nobody's walking through, but it's got to be agility. They're opening things up, but so much damage goes on to Black Coffee. They can't walk through that toxic screen. Almost picks up to agility. The last one alive, but they can't get it done. The first blood master finishes with the final kill. Ivan closes it out. Rutgers University win it in overtime. 14 to 12. Rutgers is going to Atlanta. What a match there, Lowe's. I'm so glad we got to go the distance and in overtime to determine which team moves on. It couldn't be any more hype. And I love that you pointed that out. Ivan, the person who so consistently was opening up the rounds and frags, is the one to close out the tournament with a final kill on top of it all. The young gun of Beast being the one to get the first frag for that final round as well. And Jilly trying their best to be all over the place, dancing around the site, getting frags with the team, but they couldn't quite make it happen shout out to Rutgers for proving they can play two different completely different styles of compositions as well the no deal is slow move heavy lockdown composition as well as the more standard meta with beast type being on that jet to enter onto sites things like that as well they did both of them beautifully today yeah it was amazing to see how they could bring it back from that double initiator double sentinel I was definitely uh, a bit skeptical on how they were able to bring it back how they were going to implement this onto a set they found success, and it even allowed them to move on to Icebox, where even that adjustment into, as you said, a more meta composition, they found success again, and Beast to hype on the jet. 
Maybe a duelist is something they should look into, especially if they go on to Haven, because that was yeah. a bit of tougher map for them. But in the end, they won it out, and they did it in style in overtime. And I can't wait to pick the brains of some of these players. We'll be able to interview them in just a moment. So don't go anywhere. We get some more CECC Valorant action, knowledge, everything in between right after this break.
We're back with the CECC Mid-Atlantic Valor Invitational. We wrapped up this series, and what a heart pounder, a heart thumper it was. I was I was stressed by the end of it. I didn't know how it was going to go. I thought it could have gone either way. But in the end, it's going to be Rutgers that won it out. And to tell us a little bit more about their journey through this tournament, we're bringing in almost, almost, you won. How are you feeling after this amazing victory? You're going to Atlanta. I'm feeling great, bro. Not even trolling. Anyways, like, that game was definitely, like, those three, I don't know, like, that Haven game definitely was, like, a, a heartbreaker for us because we've been practicing that map a lot. Like, that's definitely our most played map for the past, like, two months. But, I mean, we definitely practice our Ascent and uh, Icebox a lot, too. So, I'm proud that we kept our mental up and uh, hopped off. Yeah, I mean, talking about that directly, Haven having the no duelist composition, doing the same over towards Ascent. Some small differences, and Ascent also historically has had a lot more success for no duelist compositions than Haven. You really rarely see that on Haven. What do you think really was the big difference maker between those two maps? I really think we played a little bit too slow on Haven. Like, usually we have a faster tempo. Like, I know we have no duelist, but we still, like, kept the tempo a little bit too slow and we were like kind of scared to peek them like we called that out in the beginning of the game too but we couldn't address because i feel like uh you wv or something whatever their uh, name is they uh played really well uh, yeah. and adjusted really well to us like hard we couldn't do anything like props to them honestly yeah west well, virginia university definitely looked really good uh los i want to let you have an answer i just saw i had a question so your turn <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah no west virginia was looking uh, pretty popping you actually faced off uh against them earlier in this series in this event in the group stage what do you yeah. think you learned from that that you applied here in the grand finals i think we learned that it's their mids are really abusable like i on all the maps i feel like their mids were super abusable like every single one even on haven but we just couldn't like on haven we couldn't like uh like prioritize it because we were just too scared defaulting like towards garage instead of like forcing mid but uh yeah on ascent and icebox i feel like we abused it like really hard there mid i think that's why we won because we would have ivan lurk up and then like or ivan lurk up on the icebox and then for ascent we had like our entire team just work up with my drone yeah for so him definitely, we definitely saw uh the, them being able to just hold like angles basically in mid and be able to just get the gun down essentially um we saw j chronic especially as well as black coffee just from a link c link when y'all try to flood it on the b site seemed like you couldn't quite get the flashes on good timings smoke them off properly things like that so i'm sure y'all yeah. figure that out by the time line it comes around going to icebox though you went forward towards a more traditional composition with uh beast to hype being on a jet who went in and we were kind of doing a narrative of how ivan was very successful with getting a lot of uh, first kills because top the charts for ascent was doing it really well on icebox as well but then looking at the scoreboard beast to hype kind of like loki went and got eight first bloods on that entire uh, map of icebox so uh it looks like y'all are more comfortable with other compositions as well than just what you were running on the no duelist comps. Is it something that you want to try to mix it up, uh, even on the same maps like Haven do du duelist or no du duelist, based on how you feel, make it throw off the opponents, or are you kind of like looking forward to just these are icebox comps, these are other map comps. I feel like we play like really slow, so like we kind of don't need a jet that much. But the reason we play like jet on like uh, what's it called icebox and uh, breeze is because like jet can get like really good angles, and like you kind of need the dash to entry on breeze and uh, icebox. Because if you entry onto the viper site, a jet dash like disrupts like the entire like tempo, like or like whatever they're trying to do, and then the dart scan, and then like jet. Uh, Jack can just get the free kill. Like on a sense, it's like a lot slower. We could like abuse KO too. Like I know a lot of teams recently have been playing uh, KO on Icebox too, which could change a lot. But I feel like most teams are running double smokes because it's just stronger in general. I feel because one smoke for each side on the map. Makes sense. Well, almost you did it. You won the Mid-Atlantic Invitational, and you're headed to Atlanta. It's exciting news, but before we send you off to enjoy your victory, enjoy your night, is there anyone you want to give a special shout-out to? 
Uh, I want to give a shout out to like obviously my entire team because they all played really well today and we kept our mental up. Uh, I love them for that. Like we finally did it after like last semester, we couldn't really do anything. All we did was place for UGC, but right now we're like top eight in big time. And obviously we made this just now, which is amazing to me. Like last year I was on the D2 team for a while. So there was like no chance of really doing anything there. So like, I feel like um, originally me, Ivan and Ricky were from the, or Beast 2 Hype were from, uh, what's it called, the D2 team. And we definitely worked our way up. And I feel like we've definitely improved a lot to like show that we deserve to be here. Awesome, yeah. man. Thank you so much for your words. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see you guys go to Atlanta. Chad, is there something you wanted to say? No, I mean, I, I definitely was interested in your mindset after nearly clutching out a crazy 1v3 scenario, having going to overtime, but still oh, yeah. together. And then still won overtime anyway. So like... Yeah, you must have been feeling like a roller coaster of emotions in that progression. Yeah, situation. definitely. <laughs> like, like that round where we got a th that round where we were full eco and Ivan got the first kill, and then I got a kill on the omen, and the viper lurked up mid, and then changed a round. Like that kind of hurt a bit because I was like, "Fuck, it was a three v five. We should have won that round." But uh, regardless, we still won the map, so I don't really care as long as we win. As Shazam said, "I don't care how we win, <laughs> as long as we win." Dubs a dub. <laughs> That's all that matters. Again, you won almost. Congratulations. And like I said, can't wait to see you and the rest of Rutgers compete in Atlanta. But that is going to do it for us here tonight for the CECC Mid-Atlantic Invitational. Rutgers University is your champion. And there will be one more opportunity for schools to compete and get their way to Atlanta in the last chance qualifier. But that's the end of us. From here at Esports U CECC, I'm Los, joined by Chad Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all the teams who competed here today. Thank you, and good night.